and no coffee. Mm -hmm. That's pretty rough. Yeah. <laughs> 60 seconds. All right. statement or ask a question? Yes, sir. State your name and address for the record. My name is Raymond Rader. I live at 127 Woodstock Avenue in the corner of Lamouth. Uh, what I've got to say is about the construction on the streets. There's been 12 diggings, different levels, in front of my house. Speeding cars at 25 mile an hour, and most people drove 45 or more trucks and cars, it vibrates my whole house. The living room drops in September two and a half inches, the left hand side, to the right hand side four and a half inches. When water sands six to eight inches there because the street's down lower level than the drains at the intersection. Uh, six to eight inches and it's 25 feet and eight foot up onto my porch and water splashes on that onto my porch wets everything down the building and everything and across the street it it's about 25 feet the porch and the house is there it goes up on the porch there and it rattles the house I've had four gas leaks had a gas company there fire marshal there uh, I went down to the building inspector, made a formal uh, complaint, and I went to everybody else, DPW, called them, I went to the police department, they told me it's a state police problem because it's a state road, and as far as I know it's a town road. I'm a retired 55 year police officer, federal police officer, 26 cities, three trips around the world. And I know what I'm talking about when it comes to speeding or traffic accidents and so forth. I'm a Vietnam disabled 100% veteran, Agent Orange. I, last September, the 2015, on September 10th, I died of my fifth and sixth heart attack and spent uh, there. 55 years ago, I used to deliver molds. When I come back from Vietnam, I stayed friendship around two Putnam. I liked it then. It's made a lot of changes since then. All the factories and stuff are gone or burnt down or sitting vacant right now. And everything seems like it's gone down to Donaldson and Dayville. And like I said, it's dangerous to not only me, uh, the condition, nobody wants to do anything about it. It needs to be just that intersection, these one level, so the 12 different levels, and the water collects there because it's lower there than the drains. Thank you, sir. So I think, first of all, it's, it's not a state road, it's a town road. And second, the water problem should be corrected shortly, especially at probably by summer, when all the pipes are redone, and then the water people who are doing that are gonna rip up the road and re surface the road and get it up to grade proper level so that could solve a lot of your problems mm -hmm. i gotta put up with it till then yes sir what it amounts to but i it's been like that since i moved here as far as the speeding we have no the selectmen have no control no, who's speeding. i know the selectmen that's, don't that's the police. but the police department should they should that's it that's and like i said i was police department three trips around the world foreign countries rolled out to them and as a street police officer since i was 21. just to uh give you a, a heads up, the um, 
special um, service special services district has a meeting. What a meeting, Roy's or Renee? I think, I think it's oh, next week from today. Monday. Yeah, yeah a week from today, right next to the police department in that little building, and they the special services district commission are in charge oversee the police department. So in terms of your speeding complaint, things like that, that might be a good venue to address some of your concerns there. So, but I, I, like I said, I've been everywhere and here. Right. And I registered to vote here a couple of days after I got here. Yep. And I'm an independent. But, but we're, so I don't... We're told that um, by the WPCA yeah. that they're going to repave. I mean, I don't know if you've been up Walnut Street. I live out that end of the street. <laughs> And it's horrendous just trying to get home sometimes. I, I avoid that road like the plague now. So we're told that it's supposed to be redone, but you get a whole other construction season next spring and summer. So I don't know exactly when they're going to pay, but hopefully it'll be sooner rather than later. It'll help you <coughs> put a rest of this stuff. Okay, but I thank just you. wanted to make it, bring it but to go, your attention. Go next Monday to the Special Service District meeting. Is yep. that, that their police sergeant? We have no control over the police. No, I know. Okay, I, I, I run for selectman myself up north. Okay. So. Thank right. you. I have four. Approval of minutes. I move we uh, approve as submitted. Yeah. Motion made and second to approve the minutes as submitted. Discussion? Additions, corrections? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Any abstentions? Ayes have it so ordered. Petitions and communications. Denise, any? Yes. Okay. Move to six. Report a standing committee, not a reporting month. <coughs> uh, special committee, uh, charter revision, Owen. Uh, we have another meeting this Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. And I think hopefully that will be our last one before we turn everything over to Sarah. So you turn it to Sarah. What does Sarah do with it? Sarah. I don't know for whatever she's going to do. And then, then she'll present it back to the selectmen. Okay. And we'll have to have a... a Public hearing. Public hearing for that. And then the selectmen will make recommendations to my board. And then we'll get together and decide what we're going to do. And then <coughs> we'll see what happens. So when, when Sarah gives it back to the board, selectmen, right. we're, we're not going to discuss it. We're just going to entertain. Well, you can. Okay, you but know. we entertain questions from the audience yep. for their input and just yep. take note of what you're saying. Yep. And then after that, you we don't approve it. You know, you're going to make recommendations back to us <coughs> if you want to change something. Okay. And then it's up to that commission, you know, at the end, whether okay. we accept it. And then, at the very end, if the selectmen decide that that's not what you want, you can turn the whole thing down. And it's, let's just say it is what we want. Then what? It goes and to the town meeting? Well, we no, it has to go to referendum. And 15% of the vote. Okay. <coughs> Did you get the, or your meeting's going to be down in the, uh, yeah, down the old Board of Ed office, yeah. but did you get with Bill St. Ange about the questions you had about breaking out the, yeah. break, okay, so yeah. you'll have some answers on that? Yeah. Good. Okay, well, thank you. Special service, Renee or uh, Roy, you have anything on that? There, there's yeah. a meeting next Monday, week, Monday, Thursday. so okay. nothing from my last report. Uh, <clears throat> part of facilities, nothing there. Go on to eight staff reports, A, B, and C. There's no reporting month. Town administrators report. We all know Mary. This is her first big official town administrators report. Mary, the floor is yours. Welcome, Mary. Thank you. So week one, I survived it. Right? Yeah. Um, no, this week was um, this last week was a very productive week. I was very warmly welcomed by the staff and um, by everyone around. So. Um, it was, you know, very nice to be able to start here in Putnam. Um, my primary focus was the budget preparation and preparing a full and complete budget document for you guys to review, um, which you all received in your packet. Um, you also received the um, draft of the um, audit results. For a week. So Donna and I met with the auditor on um, last Tuesday, and we reviewed um, what the um, where the status of the audit was at the time um, so we were able to get those um, draft reports um, we also um, went over the findings that they were going to be reporting on in the audit so um, there are a number of findings this year the Putnam's um, audit will be issued as a qualified opinion which 
means it's not a clean opinion. Um, there were some material deficiencies that they found um, as they were performing the audit, audit, a lot of it related to grant reporting. Um, but there was you know, a, a fair list of those. Um, Amanda will be here at your next meeting to present and go over all of those findings so that way you will be able to ask directly questions and she'll be able to answer exactly what those uh, mean. I know that Donna has already started work on um, making changes to the process so she can start addressing those and making those, those changes. Now, bear in mind, um, Donna only became the finance director in November, which is well past fiscal year. It's actually well past the preparation time for an audit. Um, you would be actually, traditionally at a town, if you're going to issue your audit by December 31st, you're, you're in the wrap-up phase at that point by the end of November, and you're issuing draft. Um, she was just coming on board. So the town was already kind of behind the eight ball on that. Um, and Donna certainly didn't have necessarily had control over the prior fiscal year's information. So she's worked very diligently on pulling together the information that the auditors need um, and got that information to them as she could, as she had it available. Um, and I know that, you know, when we met with her, the, some of the findings that they had, she's already started to address those, um, which is, you know, a great thing for someone just starting into that position to be able to start addressing some of those items right off the gate. So um, that's a that's definitely a really good thing. Um, so that was really the primary focus of, of last week. I did meet with you know the uh, superintendent and um, the business manager as well, just to kind of you know touch base, say hi, see where they were with their budget and with some of the revenues that are being proposed from the governor. Um, and I've started to meet with, um, I met with Wheeler Grader and um, a few other um, people throughout the week, but that was week one. Mm -hmm. Do we have any questions for Mary? Yes, I do. Uh, good start, obviously. Um, understanding that the last couple of fiscal years have been challenging because of turnover and, the, sure. and whatnot. What is the possibility of getting the audit complete by November? In other words, the Board of Selectmen before the beginning of the year have the real copy of the, of the audit? I would say, um, I, I think it would be more realistic for the, okay. for the town to shoot to have the um, audit ready by December 31st. Um, that is the traditional cutoff for filing requirements with the state is December 31st. Um, most audits aren't done until December 31st. Most town audits aren't completed until then. Um, that being said, with the items that we have that we need to address, um, I think that it, it's going to take a couple of years to get this cleaned up, to be quite honest. It's not going to be a one-year fix. Um, there are some definite um, reporting items that are going to take more than one cycle to get um, the auditors comfortable with the, with, the correct, with the process and that we're following through with that process. So. Um, I would say this year, our goal would be to be issued by December by December 31st. Realistically, it may not happen until January 31st. That's still before your budget process. That's still before the, this budget needs to be in your hands. So the goal is to have the actual audit issued, full copy in hand, by the time this budget is actually issued. I think going into next fiscal, this upcoming audit cycle, bear in mind we're already you know, three quarters of the way through the through the fiscal year, so um, half of which she wasn't the finance director for. Um, I think that's a more that's a realistic look um, at where you where I think that we're going to be able to land for next year. In the subsequent year, I would think that we could get to December thirty first. Um, I don't know that it would be realistic to anticipate getting an audit issued by the end of November. That's just not typically the time frame of getting an audit issued by. You would have to be on a very advanced schedule for that. Why? Why? Because you're you're not closing out the fiscal year. All your invoices aren't coming in. All of the ending of the year books are not being finished until the end of August, beginning of September. Um, they then have to close out the books and prepare final closing entries. That gets you until the beginning of October. October is when you could potentially have your auditors come out. Is the beginning in the middle of October. They then have to do their field work, which typically takes two to three weeks 
for audit work to happen can potentially take longer than that, depending on what grants and things that you have going on. With the um, audit findings that we have, it's probably going to take a little bit longer in field work than just three typical three weeks. And then you're going to have, after that, um, draft and comments and stuff like that, which by the time you roll into November, you do have some holiday time in there that kind of everybody has to sort through. So the end of November is a very aggressive schedule for a typical audit. Um, the end of December is more, more like, it's a more reasonable, and it is our the time frame of when the audits are actually due to the state without going on extension. That's your primary deadline. So did we give them, the, we grant them an extension this year? They got, th there was a total of three extensions for the town this year. It was an extension to get to January 31st, an extension to get to the end of February. We did a third extension just so we could do the final cleanup of, um, final cleanup, really the final draft and review of that draft for them to publish by the end, by Friday. They're supposed to have the audit issued by Friday. So you'll have the audit before um, your next meeting. Doug, how many years in a row have we applied for extensions for this, for our annual audits? I know what happened last year. Obviously, it happened this year. I believe that Putnam has, I haven't gone back and looked. I don't know how many years in a row that you've actually filed for an extension. Excuse um, me, Mary. Yeah. At least three. I don't know if you were filing. I'm aware of three, three yeah. yeah. And I'm wondering how far back it goes beyond that. Uh, I'm not sure. I'd have to check. It's just strange. Well, you've had yeah. a lot of turnover. And that does impact the ability to prepare for that audit cycle when you have as much turnover as you've had. I, you know, I don't know. I haven't gone back to look and see when Paula was here if you were having to file it for an extension during that time period. But um, you know, when an auditor knows coming in that you weren't ready in October for them, they're not gonna waste your time and they're not gonna waste their time by showing up in October and having to disappear because the books aren't ready. They're gonna, they're gonna schedule you later in their, in their cycle because you traditionally have not been ready. So, um, and again, it's just, there's been a lot of turnover within that finance department. It's really hard to, keep on cycle with that. And I think the turnover in the finance department is an issue in and of itself over and above this mm -hmm. that we've been dealing with. And it's probably the gift that's going to keep on giving for a little while too. As Mary said, this is going to affect us moving into the future. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully our present treasurer will stay for another 20 years. <laughs> It'll have consistency and continuity in the, in the uh, office of the finance director. And along with Mary Self, I think it's, it's stuff is being cleared up right now, as we speak, and, and it's, it's a good cycle. My overriding concern is not necessarily the, the, the recti rectifying problems that are, that are addressed. I mean, we know what they are. I think as she gets more time in the job and people, you get more time in the job, that'll be fine. The problem is, is unless we can get the data that we just recently received sooner, mm -hmm. we're running up, we're running up against deadlines in the town charter as it's as the charter's written now. Mm -hmm. And I'm not gonna. It's it's, in my opinion, foolish to sit here and try to pass departmental budgets when we don't even have any yet. We don't even know what the what the revenue. Is. And I understand or expected those. revenues or shortfalls or whatnot. So basically, we'd sit here writing blank checks for a whole year without even knowing how much income's coming in. Right, and I understand that concern, and that's why I said for next year, I really think probably the latest you would look at is a January 31st, okay. which is still well within your time frame. Um, I think I don't think we'll see having to do a second extension out until February. I think if there is an extension, it will just be through the end of January, okay. um, which would still give you ample time to receive that as well as a full budget document. And I think going forward, that's the intent is next year is that when you receive the budget, you're gonna receive an entire complete budget package with all of revenue, all of expenditures and estimates that go with it. Um, so I know that you know Donna and Denise both worked really diligent this, diligently this week with me to put that all together. So, um, and I think that's, you know, the go forward, that's our, that's our game plan. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.
Thanks, Mary. When we get down to B, 10B, you can explain further on the revenue side. <coughs> Unfinished business, item 10. Cargo Falls Dam. I am at wit's end after sending three different emails at three different times to the owner of uh, Cargo Falls Mills, and I've gotten one response, which I shared with all the selectmen, that the lawyers are still looking at whatever the hell they're looking at. And we want the nine points clarified, and we have no points clarified, and nothing in, in writing. I put a call in again today, and I no response again. Uh, they asked permission to lower the gate because they want to do work, and I refused. I said, you're, you're not, it stays just the way it is until we start getting answers. I said, until further notice, don't ask the town to do something for you well, you don't even have the courtesy to ask, give the town some answers. So that's where we stand with that. Good. Is the, is the biggest issue... Oh, excuse me. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I don't know where you wanna, what you want to do with this. What well, I'd like to see... Well, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, what I'd like to see is, that, you know, right I now? see this, this relationship going to a place that's 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 counterproductive to either what we want or what they want. <clears throat> but I don't want Miss Mary, I know you're a busy guy. Call her up, invite her to lunch. Uh -huh. And let's start mending the relationship. It's got well, a lot I thought you did that to her last time and right. told her and you gave her a great picture, you know, get out there, talk to the And I thought I, I thought I would see I thought I would see you that. I nothing. thought I'd see maybe a thing in the shopper's yeah, guide of what it's all gonna look like or something posted and well And I know she had an unfortunate situation, so have we. So, you know, you have to pull up your pants and move on. And they're not willing to do that thing. That's my, my, my opinion. And we've reached out. I have been very nice to her and to Tim Sheldon and He's kind of responsible, but then he wants favors back. And, you know, I, I, Jerry Blossom went through the roof when, when he asked us to open the, the what do you call it, the Bastille Bastille Gate. Bastille Gate. And when you do that, by the way, when you lower that gate, you know what happens to the natural falls? Right. If you notice, natural, the natural, natural falls, falls look like Niagara Falls right now. Yeah. It's beautiful. But I think, I think maybe with this little bit of leverage that we have, maybe that will prompt them to, to answer our questions. I, I hope so. I mean, you know, I, I'm trying, like, some of what you were saying at the last meeting, Doug, part of me wants to say, speaking as an attorney, I know I can sometimes be slow on stuff. So when she says it's in their hands, some of that's out of her hands. However, she can at least return a phone call, return an email, even if she says it's still with the attorneys, she's at least communicating something. And... The yeah. larger issue that I have, and I mentioned this at our, must have been at the last meeting, yeah. <coughs> that remember when she was here and we were discussing the point about we wanted the data from the falls mm -hmm. so we very could quickly, the, if not in real time. So we could give it to the public. So if we they could had give it to the public. And sure. she said, well, I'm asking for 30 days, but right. in all likelihood, I can get it to you sooner. 15 was her right. answer. Right. Well, here, we're not even asking for something like that. We're asking simply for feedback. Hey, this is what, what we're looking for. What can you offer back? And since that meeting where she sat right over there, how long has it been? Two months? It's been nine weeks. Yeah. Nine weeks. But, but that's yeah. where I'm saying it's in her attorney's hands. There's only so much. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Renee. If I had an attorney and I said I need this by X date, and he didn't provide it? Fire him. Right. Uh, you know, I, 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 for, the, for the good of the town, I want the same to succeed. You know, I want to see the apartment buildings. I want to see them get hydropower yeah. and whatever, whatever, whatever they do. But this is just, yeah. it's just too long. And, and there's no answers. And again, th their answer was they, all the bids that came in were overbid. So they redid them. Not, I don't think it takes nine weeks. But the interesting thing is we asked her, when do you think you can give us an answer by? We didn't tell her we need an answer in 30 days or 15 days. We put the ball in her cart and say, when do you think you can give it to us by? And she, she, her reply was, 30 days should be fine. 
So it's not like we pressured her. She was the one that set the date. It wasn't an arbitrary date. So well, I agree with Doug. I'll continue to be nice to her. Now I'll send another email tomorrow saying we had a meeting tonight and we're still in a quandary over what the deal is. Tell her we're going to take the dam down if she's going to do something soon. Take the whole thing right out. <laughs> oh, you're violent. You're violent. Have fun with that. You're violent. Okay, let's move on to 10B. You know, I'm, uh, I'm thinking we might want to postpone this, seeing that all the other things that we have until the end. The 10 so, the fiscal discussion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I like, do it? I'd like to move that we uh, put that at uh, item uh, 12I. I'll second that. Motion made and second to move uh, the budget discussion to 12I. Yep. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Any abstentions? So moved. A fine choice, Mr. Penn. Thank you. Okay, <coughs> new business, 12A. Consider the appointment of independent Scott Tessier of 150 uh, Park Road to the Inland Wetlands Commission as a full member for a term to expire December 5, 2021. <coughs> so moved. Second. Motion made second to appoint Scott Tessier. Anybody have any problem with that? Let's see none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Scott has it. B. Consider the appointment of Republican Michael Paquin of 34 Woodstock Avenue West to the WPCA as an alternate for the term to expire November 29, 2022. So moved. Second. Anybody have a problem? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Consider the approval of the Historical Preservation Grant Resolution. You all have that in your packet? Yep. Package? Second. Scott, you move that? Yep. Yeah. And second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Thanks, have it. Consider the approval of the Fair Housing Resolution. Summa. Second. Made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Aye. Nice have it. Uh, consider the approval of Sharon Fagan Girl Scout Gold Award Proclamation. So moved. Second. Discussion? No? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll be presenting that to Shannon at the Elks on uh, Sunday the 12th. 12th. Uh, town of Minnesota. Well, well, Sunday what? The 12th? The 12th. At one, the 1 o'clock. 12.30 at 1 o'clock. It'll be downstairs in the back room of the Elks. Got it. Okay. Uh, town administrator's contract. We have that in your package. We'll go into executive session because that deals with negotiations and money. All other business to lawfully come before this board. Oh, bills. Oh, bills. Oh, bills. Approval bills. Make the motion to pay all approved bills. Second. Second. Discussion. Any bills outstanding? Any bills that we should be aware of that are different? And all those in favor of approving the bills, signal by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Aye, seven, so what? Do we do a Do we do a Yeah. What is that? There was none. There was none. Uh, other business. I received a letter from our. This you like this good news. I received a letter from our lawyers, one of our sets of lawyers. Uh, our environmental lawyer firm, uh, I can't even pronounce the name, but they're raising the rates. Mm -hmm. Just to let you know that they're going up per hour, and the paralegal is going up per hour. And I'm, I'm waiting for Ken Weinstock to send us a letter that his rates, he's our municipal uh, lawyer for labor. He hasn't sent his yet, but I'm sure we'll get that. Okay. Any other business to lawfully come before this meeting? Okay, so now we go to 12. 12 I. 12 I. This will be fiscal year 2017-18. Now Mary, our town administrator, sent a letter to all the department heads, thanking them for the budget process and blah, blah, and coming here. And I implored them to come here so that the selectmen get an idea of what's in their budget. Mr. Mayor, before we start, I'd like to move that under direction of our town administrator with consent and approval from our town council that we reconsider all previously approved department budgets. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Motion made by Scott Seck, my own, to reconsider all approved departmental budgets. Discussion? Doug? Yes, thank you. 
given the way that our budget season has gone historically, like for instance, last year we went through our budget season. We had your budget, Mr. Mayor, we went over it and we sent it piece by piece down to the, the Board of Finance. Then they had it. I don't think we ever did that. Ever. What? We just send the whole we send the whole yeah. package to them one time. We don't send it piece by piece. No. We okay. never send it piece by piece. No. Okay. I've been here twenty years and not yeah. once it was done piece by piece. I would like it if you could show me somewhere in any minutes, Owen. I know we never sent it. Ever. No, that's we, correct. Wendy, uh, well, I would like you to show me. Oh, 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 that's you. got the floor. Thank you. Fine. If someone can show me where we have sent a singular package, a singular proposed budget to the Board of Finance, I'd love to see it because I've researched it and I've never seen that. This board has always voted on recommendations, mm -hmm. department by department, right. and almost never in the same meeting. In fact, many times, many years, we've voted on different departments in a proposed budget over the course of multiple months, mm -hmm. including last year. Now, what I don't like to see is when this board makes a decision and says this is what we want to do especially in the budget season we say okay here are the proposed numbers from the mayor on this on this particular in this particular <coughs> department on, in that particular department we make the recommendation we accept those numbers and send them to the board of finance okay if we don't send, if, if that motion that we make on every single department, which, right. how many departments do we have in the budget? Okay, a lot. Then why are we making motions and voting on individual departments? Because, I, oh, okay. It's a rhetorical was, question, okay. but actually one that could, could have an answer. I, I will have a response <laughs> one. Okay. What I don't like to see is, and we ran into this problem last year, and this is really what it comes down to for me. Last year was such a colossal screw up. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm using, I'm using the term screw up lightly because I actually don't think it was a screw up. Screw up means unintentional. I think it was very intentional last year. And the situation that we had was, we voted as a board on all the different department proposed budgets given to us by the mayor. And one by one, all those departments, all of our recommendations for each one of those departments went to the Board of Finance. When they had it, they had their public hearing, they deliberated on all the different departments, and then they voted to send, to recommend an expenditure side of the budget and a revenue side of the budget to the town meeting. And I was at that meeting. They voted on those numbers. <coughs> and then a week later, this board met. And at that meeting of the Board of Selectmen, one week after the Board of Finance voted to send final numbers to a town meeting, we were told that this is the number that's going to the town meeting for, for expenditures, and that's the number that's going to town meeting for revenue. And it was not the set of numbers that was approved by the Board of Finance. Let me take that back. I don't like using the word approved because in the, in the charter, approval only comes from the town meeting. Those were the two numbers that were recommended and sent to town meeting by the Board of Finance. And the numbers that we were given at the Board of Selectmen's meeting were not the same numbers. And that was on a Monday by the end of the week when it was actually published, here's what's going to town meeting, the numbers had changed yet again. Not only were they different from what the Board of Finance had voted on, they were different than what, they, what we were told at the Selectmen's meeting. So now they had changed twice. 
Right, and I agree with you, Doug, because I was the one that caught it with you. Exactly. But, but here's the problem, Scott, and everyone that's listening. That can only happen when there are people that are a part of the process that shouldn't be a part of the process at different junctions. For instance, right now, the only people that are a part of the process sit at this board, right? Right. And when it leaves here, the only people that are a part of the process are the Board of Finance. And then when the Board of Finance is done, the only people that have a say are the whom? Town's people. Right. So when we approve numbers, I again, let me walk that back. When we recommend numbers, when we vote on numbers, like we did, what was it, a month ago already? Mm -hmm. And we say, these are the numbers that we all agree on that we <clears> want to send <throat> to the Board of Finance. I just don't understand the thought process of them saying, nah, we want a, mul we want a mulligan. We're going to grab that baton back from the Board of Finance and we're going to bring it back. Okay. Well, that was so wait, can I? I it, it, Renee, she was, yeah. was going to challenge Thank you, Tony. The, yeah. the state. So, yeah, the word approval, <laughs> I'm going to try not to use it, yeah. but if I do, I apologize I in advance. Going, yeah. And let me say what happened last year. There's a two-word phrase for what happened that I don't want to use on the tape, but last year hopefully will never happen again. But our usual process, at the very end, when we finish this and we set this down, we vote to send our budget, our proposed budget, the Board of Selectmen budget for the BOS budget line item to the Board of Finance. When we go through page by page before that, what we're voting on is what our budget is for that page. So if, like right now I have it open to municipal historian, when we voted on municipal historian, we were saying whatever the bottom line number was, was what we're submitting as our budget for municipal historian. That's not sending it to the Board of Finance. That's simply a matter of internal housekeeping rather than trying to keep track of all of these changes, because sometimes there are multiple changes, and, and potentially having some get lost in the mix. Once we have <clears throat> agreed on what our line budget is for each department, then someone makes a motion to send the Board of Selectmen budget, the entire thing, the entire document, onto the Board of Finance. Okay, can, you, show, can you find that for me and show it to me? Because I went and looked and there is no such motion. There has never been any such vote. I remember there being such motions. To send the whole motions. package. No. It's always department by department. I got a question. Denise would probably part be the best the able to do it. I understand that when we vote on an individual department to make a recommendation to that department, that maybe it doesn't get shipped off to the Board of Finance. And maybe we wait until we, 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 we got a recommendation on all of them, and then we give the whole thing as a whole to the Board of Finance, then how come last year when I said, could we go back and look at this? Because if I'd have known this information, I wouldn't have voted for that. I wouldn't have supported that budget. This board told me we can't do that. We've already voted on it. Had we already sent the whole thing to the Negatory, Board of Finance Ghost at that Rider. point? Negatory. Well, uh, Eric, you're, the, you're the town administrator. I just, wanted, I just want to explain the reasoning behind this. I had heard from this board on the last two meetings that there was a lot of concern over um, approving the budgets that, or, or going through and approving different budgets when you hadn't seen the whole to total picture yet. So this, and there are some budgets that had proposals that were linked to other budgets. You'd approve one, and we'll, I'm going to use the mayor's budget for an example. The mayor's budget has a proposal in it, but it reduces half of the salary for the exec executive assistant. And that half a salary is now sitting in the IT budget. You approved at the mayor's budget, but when you got to the IT budget, you tabled for further discussion. Now, if this, if this body decides that you don't want to support that, what happens to the other half of that salary? So... In looking at this and now seeing a, co a total complete picture, 
it was simply a recommendation that you, you may decide to not change any of the ones that you've already approved. But <coughs> it was just an ability to look at it as a complete package, as a complete picture, rather than in the piecemeal format that you had been going through it. Um, that was simply the reason behind it, and was just to be able to address your concerns of, we haven't seen revenue yet, we haven't seen all of the impacts of these different things, but yet we're approving individual pieces that we don't know are going to make sense in the greater picture. And so I did contact um, Bill St. Arch to find out if it was possible under the charter, if it was even in consideration um, that you could go back and do a double check because it did feel, when in, in listening to this body for the last month, that this process had been a little bit disjointed and you wanted to get to a more cohesive picture. Um, and Bill concurred that it, was, that it was possible and appropriate because this budget hadn't been set yet, sent yet to the Board of Finance. I don't, you know, I haven't been here for prior years, so I understand that last year's budget process was um, a difficult budget process, and I agree it should never repeat itself, um, but I'm just trying to give you guys the opportunity or, or, sh or look at the opportunity to be able to look at the, do the document in whole. Right. And I don't I was, have I was feeling like you did, Roy. Last, at the last meeting, you were saying the exact same thing. We don't have revenue numbers. We don't have this. And you're asking us to, to, to decide on this budget. Yeah, but and Scott, here's, here's, the, here, here's the difference. Yep. There is a difference. If you look at the ones that we've already approved, mm -hmm. one, most of them, the, all of the ones we approved only drove up the budget 26 k over the last year. When, when, when it was, when I'm looking at it, and I can say, okay, the three percent raise here and the five for the union. You know, when 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 the when the major piece of any uh, more money than was budgeted the year before can be made up can be explained by the payroll going up. I mean, one budget we looked at, it went up like eleven thousand bucks, but nine of it was payroll. I, you know, that's kind of like budget neutrality. But what I find almost incredulous, Scott, is. Last week, or the last Board of Selectmen meeting, you and Owen wanted to continue doing that. Yeah, I, I don't understand that. Why not? That's what we've been doing for years. Jerry was here. I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear some of their numbers. But then this package, and I got to hand it to Mary. When we got this package, I was like, "Hey, this is great. I got everything now." There now there are a few things in some of the items that we approved already that I'd like to go back and talk about. We talked to Bill. He said it's. It's legal, doable, and that's why I made the motion. I wonder if this is going to, now that we're talking about it out in the open, exactly what we want to do. Right? We've had motions and votes on things. If, is this going to set a precedent where in the future, well, two out of three, two out of three votes, or you know, we voted on that last week, but, but this meeting, we're going to vote on it again. Uh, the reason because that's exactly what this is. No, 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 I, I think you're wrong. I, I think I asked the, the department has to come to speak <coughs> to the Board of Selectmen to explain their budget. Better them than me or you saying, cut that out of your budget. Who the hell are we to tell Jerry Bosley to cut a rake out that we don't know a uh, York rake or whatever is in there? You know, if you want to say something, cut $10,000 and let him do that. So I, I think maybe the mistake was made, the word approval, after we discussed those budgets. Anybody have a question on Jerry's budget? Anybody have a question on Willie's budget? Anybody have a question on this budget? And we hastily went through the town clerk's budget, assuming, as she told us, that, oh, my salary decrease because I got the 3%. Right. Upon further review, it's 9.5%. That's a mistake on our part. So to reconsider and say, well, wait a minute, that's not fair to all the other department heads. And as a board, I don't think we can look the department heads in the eye and say, well, you department has got three, but this department has got nine. That, 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 that to me doesn't jive. And to go back to you, Roy, last year we had juggernaut heads. We had our finance director who was set in her ways. We had our town administrator who was set in his ways. They both gave me different numbers. Finally, the numbers they gave Denise were wrong. 
unbeknownst to Denise, she gave it to the publisher, they published the wrong damn numbers. That's not gonna happen ever again. When we leave, Mary and Donna will give these are the numbers that you approved. That's what's going to the paper, that's what's going to the general public, that's what's gonna be discussed at the annual town meeting. We have done, as Owen said, and I'm not sticking up Owen, we have done this in the past, and it's not an approved individual piecemeal, it's to understand the whole budget and why they put things in. And I agree with you, Roy, our budget's only up about 1% from last year, and this current fiscal craziness. But if you start adding, as Mary did, 790,000 for teacher retirement, we had to put it in there. Our, our mill rates right now, if you look at it, it's about 8%, 8 mills up from last year. 9.11. Well, thank you for the clarification. But a lot of that is the, the, the governor's, and I think more than three quarters that's going to get thrown out the window because it's just not going to fly in Harvard. So I, I think <clears throat> tomorrow, Mary and I will get a better, a clearer understanding of what is actually happening when we go to the state and get some, some accurate numbers from those people. But uh, I'm, I'm glad you made that motion, Scott, because there's, there's things we have to, to look at. And, you know, I pointed out one, Mary pointed out another one, and we'll just say, if you have no problem with, the cer with certain parts of the budget, just let it go. And we always send our recommended budget in totality to the Board of Finance. So, there you go. Doug, I can tell you, I don't remember what year it was, what department it was. There have been times since I've been sitting here, or more likely sitting there, that we did reopen a department after the initial pass. My guess is it was probably something like the issue with the town clerk's budget, where it turned out there was either an error in the departmental budget or where we were told this and it was really that. I don't remember the circumstances. Um, but I know we have gone back to it in prior years. My guess is that last, I think the last year when that was said to you, I thought, okay, maybe we did it wrong in previous years. So you remember it being said to me too, don't I you? don't, I don't, but I'm willing to take your word for it. I don't recall it offhand. Um, to be honest, a lot of the budget sessions from year to year sort of blend together in my mind. But if that was said last year, then I know what my response would have been. My internal response would have been, oh, I guess we did it wrong the prior year. But we never have Bill sitting here to tell us one way or the other. This year, we actually have Bill chiming in on it, which is a relief. <laughs> um, and, and so we know exactly where we are for this year and moving forward. And I think before the night's over, Mary's going to go over our revenue side in detail so have a, a much clearer picture okay so so I, so basically we we do we do a departmental recommendation we, we make a motion on an individual department right and then we just undo it as we please afterwards. until we make a final motion to send our budget to the board of finance and if somebody could find for me where we've ever done that I would appreciate it because That's I've researched it and never found one. <clears throat> but this is my fourth town budget, and Scott, it's your fourth town budget, and I haven't found, maybe it's there. Maybe I'm not looking at the right minutes. But, but based on your emails, Doug, that's why we wanted to check with Attorney Sadon to right. see if this was even doable. Right. And it turns out it is. Maybe we've never done it before. Maybe we said it couldn't be done and we were wrong, but according to the Town Council, he said we can do it. My concern is just like what Roy, what Roy just said. <clears throat> we go and we approve these things, and then at any time we can say, "Whoops, no, we're going to revisit that." I think it sets a bad precedent. Okay. And if you find a mistake, you're going to let that mistake fly. The thing is, though, here in this budget situation, in in the in a proposed budget process, there are checks and balances, and we are not. Okay. The last stop, we were only the first stop in this process. Correct. And when we find an issue like this, like I fully expected that word would get passed to the Board of Finance, oh, by the way, you need to take a look at Town Clerk, you need to take a look at uh, Parks and Rec, you need to take a look at these things because here are the issues that we found out 
after the fact. And then they have a whole, what, month, month and a half? Two months? Not even. They, they get, they're supposed to come up by the 27th. Okay. So when they get it, when they start yeah, deliberating, according to the town, that's not true. According to the town charter, we got till the second Wednesday in April. To hand it to the board of the Yep. I read it last week. Mm -hmm. I just like the taxation. A document that I that I could stand behind and I right. feel is true and correct. Mary? The the one thing with this budget, the package that you received. There was quite a few departments that didn't even have the mayor's budget completed in it. Right. So it wasn't a complete budget document. Um, and there was, you know, a lot of them, the ones that you had to table, you tabled because you didn't have a department right. request. Right. You didn't have a mayor's request as well. And um, I agree, most of them d doesn't, have, doesn't have much of a variation from the current year, except when you start layering in proposals that impacted other budgets, like the mayor's budget. You know, 31,000 of wages went out of the mayor's budget and into the IT budget. Now, if you were to pull, if you were to decide that that's not how you want to go, there's $31,000 worth of wages that need to be reshifted. Re and how does that happen? Board and that finance. was the mechanism, huh? Board of Finance. But if you, just, if you pulled it out of the Board of Selectmen's budget, and pulled that $31,000 out of the Board of Selection budget, that's half of a full-time person. Right. Where does the, uh, that person, we have a full-time person, we still need to account for those wages in some direction unless we're moving it to a part-time position. So that was, in looking at the, and in hearing what you had, in what had been discussed prior was that it was an incomplete budget <coughs> document. It was looking at it as, um, Although you've heard and received the information from the departments, it this year I think is an was an exact an exception in that you you didn't receive a complete budget document. Our hope is next year our goal is that when you get it the first time around, it's going to have full department numbers. It's going to have full mayor budget numbers. It's going to have full revenue, a full budget package as you see right here, so you can deliberate from the very beginning with a complete picture. <coughs> Um, okay, so Tony, you said, excuse me just a minute, you said you were going to Hartford with uh, Mary to, right. to get, get some granularity on... on, more, on more so the education budget. On the revenues. Revenues. So that's one, of the, that's one of the moving factors within this budget that's going to be a moving factor in every year's budget because we only at this point have received the governor's proposal, the governor's proposed budget, which, so the governor proposes his budget, Appropriations gets that budget and starts making changes to it in about April time frame. Um, but legislature doesn't pass that budget, so we don't know our final revenues until June, which is past everybody's time frame. So mo all, all the um, towns have to begin their budget process by using the governor's proposed numbers. Um, this year, the proposed numbers had an even um, had a lot more changes to it and a lot more um, differences than in prior years. So there's been a lot of question over the special education grant. Um, the information that was originally um, sent out by CCM and by the governor's um, department did not give a whole lot of information about what that grant was and how it was going to be applied. Um, it was set, it was relayed that it was a reimbursement grant and that the towns would receive between zero to 54% of their special <coughs> education costs. But nobody knows where they land in that zero to 54%. And it's being determined on completely different factors than what was being determined before. Since, just since Friday, we've got, I've been able to get a little bit more information tomorrow at the CCM meeting. Um, they're gonna be able to go into more information it's not going to, it's gonna potentially be able to give us an opportunity to change our methodology on how we're applying that revenue. However, it's not gonna change the governor's budget at this point. The next step for changing the governor's budget is really appropriations. So the teacher's retirement piece, the cut in ECS, the education grant, and you know the hospital tax are all items that are big question marks will remain a big question mark even as we go through appropriations. 
but it gives you a more com a, a more total picture as to what you're facing or potentially <coughs> facing in the revenue side. Mr. Mayor, yes. I like you and everyone on this board wants this board to do its due diligence mm -hmm. to present good recommendations to the Board of Finance in a timely manner that fits this, this charter. The longer I go as a selectman, I see just <clears throat> more problems because it seems as though there are some dates in this charter that don't necessarily jive with our municipal calendar when it comes to a, a proposed budget. And then we have issues like this where we're making motions and having votes on departments and then bringing those departments back again and having more votes on them. Maybe now that we're going over the charter, maybe we can as a board, since the board, since Owen's board, charter revision, hasn't addressed these, these issues yet. Maybe we as a board, when we get charter revision, we can look at this process a little more closely and outline it a little more clearly so we don't wind up in situations like this where we have one or two or three selectmen saying you can't do this the other is saying we can do this but it's still murky so we had to get an, an opinion from our town's attorney who's still referring to something that's murky so maybe when we get this thing, we can go over it and look at it a little more clearly. We're not, we don't have that advantage because <coughs> we have to, by law or by charter, get our budget approved in totality to the Board of Finance by... Second Wednesday in April. No, 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 no you're dreaming. That, that's by the town charter, Tony. Totally. So where do you think town these came from? These, where these come from? Right here. Target town charter. Target dates are what we shoot for. So everything the target dates are on the bottom. But it says the last Wednesday in March, budget to the Board of Finance. Not that, that's not what the charter says. Hell, the charter says, says you don't even charter. have to present us your but you don't even have to present us your recommendation for a budget, i.e. all of this, until the second Wednesday in March. That's why I asked at the meeting, you know, maybe the maybe the Charter Revision Committee's gotta look at this. <clears throat> well wait till you see what the Charter Revision Committee came up two, with. Two or three dates in there already. Right. You moved it all up. Yeah. But I think it would behoove this board. Because we're the ones that are dealing with. Look at this. Look at how much time we wasted tonight. I don't think it's wasted. <laughs> That's why I want to move the question. Well, but I mean, Scott, just a second, please. Just a second. Just a second. So maybe when charter revision gets to this board, because it's coming here, we can all say, look at what we just went through these last two years. Is there a way that we can clean this up? Okay. So it doesn't happen again. Do it. One procedural point before we vote on this. So let's say. We vote on basically wiping this clean and starting from scratch. And let's say that goes down. And we go through, so we just finish the departments we haven't touched yet. And it goes to a vote to send it to the Board of Finance. And we have some people like you who say, okay, there were errors in our calculations, let the Board of Finance fix it. And there are some people who like Scott say, we know there's an error in here. We have the responsibility to fix it. And his side is in the majority. So the vote on sending this to the Board of Finance goes down. What happens then? Don't we go back to the beginning? Yep. We go back to the beginning anyway. This is just skipping a bunch of those intermediate steps. Okay, there's, there's a motion on the floor to yeah. second it. Uh, I'll read it again. Mm -hmm. Under the direction of our town administrator with consent and approval from, from our, our town council to quote reconsider all previous approved department budgets that was moved and seconded all those in favor of the motion signify we had a long enough discussion those who want to reconsider signify by saying aye aye opposed nay one nay six yeah no any abstention. abstention one two three four five yay one nay one abstention okay now the question is how are we going to do this mary I would recommend that we start with the revenue numbers just so that we can get through those. So the revenues are towards the back of your budget package. Is there a number on that? 
Yeah, it's going to be budget number 13, 13, <laughs> And this is just so we can kind of look at where our revenue numbers are going right now. So it's way towards the very back. It's probably the last the 10 board. pages or so. After the board of yeah. yeah after this the is board not of numerical <coughs> order. And just before capital improvement. Yeah. So this one, obviously, the bill rate hasn't been set, so the current year tax is a blank, and the big unknown is the hospital property tax. Yes, so this, this reflects, and we chose to reflect the prop, hospital property tax separately. Mm -hmm. um, so the hospitals, if this proposed budget, if the governor's proposed um, legislation would go through, the town would tax the hospital property at its current mill rate. Um, we chose to, instead of just include that in the overall property tax calculation, we wanted to show that potential revenue separately so that way we could... Um, adjust for that if the revenues change as we're continuing to go through this process. Gotcha. Um, but overall, this, for the most part, remains fairly flat um, in the individual revenue lines. The next one, the town clerk. Um, the increase on the town clerk, so that, that 13, one is the very 13, next one, 13, 13? 13, 13. 13. Oh, 13, 13. 13. 13. So the increase on the um, town clerks is related to the real estate conveyance and the vital statistics. Um, she's been budgeted at 50 and 55,000 respectively. In looking at the trending history of what um, the revenue was actually coming in at and recognizing the um, there's more um, real estate market movement than what there had been and it's continuing to sort of climb we felt it, and I, you know, discussed this with Sarah. She felt that it was realistic to move both of those numbers to sixty thousand for each of them, um, to be it better reflect where the actual revenue has been. <coughs> so that revenue has come up on that department um, for general government. Um, <clears throat> Change in this one is recreation. Um, the recreation fees have been budgeted um, historically at um, a low threshold of twelve to thirteen thousand annually. In looking back and in discussion with Willie, um, his revenues for the programs are really in the neighborhood of um, forty-five to fifty thousand. He felt comfortable with the forty-five thousand for revenue numbers to the general fund based on the programs that he had recommended within his department. So that's where we're reflecting the 45000 for recreation. Now, just so I understand, is sure. that is that contributions from uh, corporations, or is that citizens paying? Program fees. Program fees. Not, that's program not, fees, not gotcha. donations. Gotcha. Donations goes into a separate account. Yep. This is strictly program fees. So it's, gotcha. you know, day camp, yep. it's the before and after school program the youth basketball programs, it's those actual fees that are that are collected. So that is general that's the general fund revenue on that. But that's that's a pretty good size jump right there. It is, but look at uh, the audited number for June um, of 2016, <coughs> it's eighty five thousand, which he agreed is an accurate number, eighty five thousand. Um, it is accurate or inaccurate? Accurate <coughs> accurate number. Um, the previous year's um, audited number um, we didn't go back and research that number. He feels that some of it may have been classified in the donation account when it should have potentially been classified in the general government account. But again, two years old information. We didn't go back into that. We used the audited number because that was actually published in the audit. But um, he really went, you know, and I talked to him about where he felt he was going to be even for this year. And he felt his revenue for this current year was going to be in the 50000 to 55000 mark range. So he was comfortable at forty-five thousand for revenue for the upcoming year. I'm a little nervous, um, and we did have a good year on the ash, yep. but the new negotiated contract, if that uh, is is lower per per um, 
tipping fee. So I mean, we're we're really stretching it at the three. I don't, I don't think we can go more than three million is the highest we can ever go. Yeah. From now on. If we go, if we have to go that high, mm -hmm. because we are going to get less if they bring less. Right. I mean, they brought a lot last year. Chuck. So. Now this being the revenue side of the budget. Right. That means this $3 million figure, like the $2.9 million figure of this fiscal year, mm -hmm. is the actual amount of money that we're going to apply to our budget. Yes, it's not the get. actual yeah. amount of the the tipping fees we get, it's the percentage of that that equals yeah. this number. This now, is the 3.4 now that we took in. Yeah. So far. No, 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 I'm saying it's 4.3 last year. 4.3. No, that would go into that. But it was a it was a phenomenal year. Now, I have a question. There's a town ordinance that deals with how much of this ash landfill tipping revenue that we can use towards our budget, right? That was passed years and years and years ago, and then it was amended in '06. It was amended, and that governs really what that, what that number, number should is. be, right? But we're forecasting the next year. So it's, it's we don't have an actual to go by. We're saying, here's the forecast, the forecasted percent of revenue. It's, we don't have an actual to say, here's what it was and here's the revenue. I understand, but that town ordinance deals with how much we can apply the max right. yes right it sets a max number that we can apply of whatever we get in ash landfill yep. you can only use this much towards your budget okay does this three million dollar figure match or exceed or I don't know. abide by that by the terms of the town ordinance they must know. have it out what 2.2 .2 million 2 .2. And they went one percent a year but you know, we just got a brand new contract, so we have to adjust this by our new contract. We we took we took the ash landfill was gonna run out of money ten years down the line, but now it's gonna go out to 30, 35 years. It was like a forty million. We're gonna get a longer revenue stream, but less forty million dollars more yeah. by doing the new deal than having the old one. So what are you saying? Have, so uh, are you saying, Owen, that? Because we signed a new contract, that the terms of the ordinance are null and void. No, I'm not. Saying, something's got to be changed. Eventually, you're not going to have any money to go towards that. If you keep on going up a hundred, two hundred thousand a year, you're going to be putting more money in this than you actually get coming in. Doug, I will have to double check on that yeah. ordinance and make sure that the calculation is done appropriately. I've made a yeah. note on that. Okay. So I can go back and review that. Doug I did not handle that. I did not review that in right. prior to this. I don't so know the, the thank you for bringing it up. I, I'm just a little nervous that we're we're yeah. getting towards these the top end of it. But. There's a, well I got a question on that on that too. The tipping fee is separated from the base rent, right? Base annual rent. It's it or is, it, or is it, that, I know it's 405, 450. Yeah, the, the, that base rent is if they never brought anything right. in. Yeah. We're guaranteed that amount. So we're not paying so that. We're not paying. Okay. Okay. So it's not, a, it's not on top of what they bring in. But if for some reason they didn't bring anything in, we'd be guaranteed that. So it's kind of a fictitious number. Because if they're not bringing anything in, they'd be out of business. Mm -hmm. We'd be out of business. See, so the difference what they pay us for the first two hundred thousand, it's in it's a blended rate. The blended rate for what were we like nine? We had that. We had that in the last packet last yeah. week. Yeah, I got it. I went to seven and finished reading it. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. so. All right. Thank I have, you. I have the ordinance on November twentieth of two thousand and six. It was amended to increase by three percent per year. But what was the amended? Yeah. What, was like, we, what we was need the, the other part of the yeah. equation. Yeah. So, Donna, can you shoot me that um, ordinance and can you just email me that ordinance? It's been a while since I've seen it, but yeah. I knew that there was one. Yeah, you're right. June yeah. yeah. 6th. Mary. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> guys got both feet. Yeah, whatever, six. she'll figure it out. I mean, probably going to take it too much. Okay, so what's numbers. next, Maria? Next one is assessors. 
Um, and that one didn't change. That one stayed flat. We came down just a little bit on zoning. Yes. What number is that? This is 1315. 1315, stay the same. These. Oh, okay. Stay relatively the but same. Can I ask yes. you a stupid question? Go right ahead. If the audited number is 142 mm -hmm. and 116 the previous year, and you're at 82.5, what's the rationale there? The rationale, it's relating to zoning and building permits. I get that. And so you're, they don't have any projected large building permits that are going to be coming ah, in gotcha. in the next year, so you don't want to necessarily budget. So these, these were two anomalies. You they, said. Yeah, yep. they don't I necessarily, yeah. Yep. So that's where they're staying there. Understood. I would say that if next year yep. we have another oh, big, you know, then this curve is here, we have another, we have another yep. big bang up here, I would look to increase yep. that. But Understood. That's where I'd be with that. A little shaky on that. Um, <laughs> rents, which is 1317. Yeah. Um, that stayed the same, right? We stay the same on that. I got another stupid question. Antenna the, rentals? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Antenna rentals. Um, because I'm seeing a downward trend, mm -hmm. um, I'm leaving at 11,000. I have to go back through and see what all the lease agreements are. Okay. So we can then rebuild that and see where we are. So we don't want to over budget. Gotcha. Um, and then fall into a hole. And so. just for my own edification, because mm -hmm. I've never seen this before, what patio are we renting out for 500? Downtown. Downtown. Those outside yeah. dining. We're those renting that? Okay. We rent the street. Gotcha. Those are parking spots, right? Yeah. Right. So we're renting those? Yeah. yeah. We rent yeah. the street. Fans. Gotcha. But we were at 1250 and then we're at 500. Yeah, I think it was a, a declining. I remember. Right. What's the rent based on? Um, I mean, how could we go from 1250 to 500? I don't recall. I, I'm not sure. And don't there. quote me. Yeah, and I, I, I wasn't don't remember. There either. It's been a long time, but I don't remember if it was. A certain amount for the first in the beginning and then declining. Uh, okay. I, I don't so it's a con it's a contractual mm -hmm. thing. Okay. Don't don't quote me on that, but we can look that up. I'm sure. Okay. Thirteen eighteen, Mary. Thirteen eighteen miscellaneous. Um, that one we've stayed relatively the same, pretty flat on that. And then we move into thirteen twenty one tax grants. This, a lot of this comes from um, the governor's proposed budget. Um, so you're seeing some decline on this because of the, um, where is it? Well, I thought some of the pilot money was going away. It did. And that's why he allowed us to tax the hospital. Yeah, so he got rid of the municipal projects grant. So if you notice, that's $171,000. Ah, that's $1, okay. That got wiped out. Um, they did do a small increase to the sales, uh, retail sales tax revenue sharing, um, but it didn't offset that big right. drop. So that's where you're seeing the decrease from. Is that where the, what was it, one tenth of one percent went to, of the sales tax went to yes. towns that's, or whatever? Yep. Yeah, that's the uh, retail sales tax revenue sharing. Yes. Keep on bidding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So the last uh, 1322 Board of Education, this is where you're seeing the biggest impact of the governor's budget. And so we're going to kind of walk through a little bit of this education cost sharing. The methodology from the governor's budget is that they removed it. They removed the funding or isolated funding for special education from the baseline ECS cost sharing. Um, they um, proposed it as a special education grant. Um, we're still getting more information about that. Um, the latest information that I received um, was from uh, George Raphael with um, CCM. Is that the total amount? The total amount that um, Putnam would receive would be two point six million dollars. The reason why I'm only seeing one point one here is because in conversations with the um, with Nancy from the Board of Ed, she indicated that their special education total costs were in the neighborhood of 2.6 total. So if we were only going to get about 54% at the most, 1.1 seemed reasonable. Today she emailed me revised numbers. She was incorrect in the number that she gave me in her, the total special education cost to the town for the Board of Education is 
like 4.2 million. So the 2.6 is about the 50 to 54%. Um, so the governor's budget, that's what they utilize. They utilize the prior year's special education numbers from the school board to develop that grant number. And they automatically applied the assumed percentage that the towns would receive. Um, so they're now looking at it, or the information that's coming out now is that it would be really looked at more like the school's excess cost grant that they received. So that school receives a reimbursement for excess costs for special education costs. And they receive that directly from the state. They net their budget for that. So they don't include what their reimbursement would be in their, in their ask to the town. Um, it appears that that's how they're going to apply the special education grant as well. So this revenue number would get adjusted up to the 2.6, which will drastically change your right, overall mill rate picture. Because if we do the 2.6 and the 5.7, yep. that's 8.3 mm -hmm. as compared to their last year was 8.4. Exactly. Gotcha. Exactly. So it, it neutralizes that. The only um, offset to this is the Board of Education's expense budget should reflect net that amount the net the 2.6 out of special edu out of their education budget because they would be directly reimbursed for that. Right. Um, this year they are allowing this is a, a, a one shot deal. The, the governor governor's budget is proposing a modification or an allowance in the change <coughs> in the MDR. You're allowed to reduce your MDR by the amount that your ECS is reduced. So you would be able to reduce the education's budget by the 2.6 million that the ECS budget was actually, the ECS revenue was cut. So you would be able to, uh, boards of education are able to net that special education grant into their budget and not run into an MBR problem, gotcha. okay? So that is kind of a developing thing and tomorrow we should receive a lot more information on that to be able to give everybody a much better, better, better picture on it. But this was the information that, you know, as of Thursday afternoon, this is what we had for information that we needed to go with. Mary, question. The first three columns on 1322, the total income cells lead about 20 million, almost 23, and then a little over 23. But the columns don't add up to that. Oh, that's adding all of the previous revenue pages that we just went through. Okay. That's adding all of them together to come up to a okay. total income Okay, line. so this is total income for all revenue. For all gotcha. revenue streams, gotcha. yeah, not just Board of Education. It's coming into that total revenue stream. If you stream. look at that. Good question, yeah. If you look at the, the 16, 17 budget, which is what we're on, under right now, yeah. total income of 23,300,000 mm -hmm. versus yeah. projected income of 11.8 right, again because plus they 1 point no, something. No, but they don't have the tax revenue right. in, in the Got past. It. Okay, all right. The, okay. the amount raised by taxation. What, yeah. about, what yeah. about the special education grant? Would that still be in there if we're going to get the 2.6 million? From that? So what would happen is we'll if, a million dollar could, if that if, happens, if it could you go to 2.6. Well, if you no, were to it. if you were to net the budget, yeah. if the two point if the Special education grant would be the to be considered the same as excess excess cost. You would zero it out here, but you would reduce the board of education budget by the two point six million because it nets out their special education cost, and they receive that money directly. Um, likewise, if their special education cost goes above the four point three million, they're still continued to be eligible for that um, for that grant. So. Um, that would be what happened. The other, the other school of thought on this, um, other towns, and more have gone the way of netting as opposed to going in this direction. But some towns have taken the approach of grossing up the Board of Education budget to, and then recognizing this um, special education grant as a revenue on the town side. So there's kind of two schools of thought. Most are now moving to the picture as it, as it being applied as excess cost. So they're netting the budgets, but in this case, the Board of Education has already submitted their budget to the Board of Finance. So I recognize that's kind of more, I think, on their purview at this point, but I wanted you guys to see the overall picture. So Mary or Donna, whichever one of you would be better 
able to address this. If, since we have no number for current year taxes, if we looked at our current, our new uh, list. Grand list. Our new grand list, right. At the current yep. year's mill rate, what would our what would that tax mean? revenue be? I have so, that right. Uh -huh. I, was say, you I have should have known you'd have it. You should have a mill rate calculation in your package. Uh -huh. That was towards the very end. So because of the change in the grand list, Right. If everything else was equal and we had a 97% collection rate right. with the same mill rate, with, well, no, I'm going to I'm going to show you this. Just because of the change in our grand list, our mill rate, if nothing else changed and we had a flat, everything was flat, it would go from 1704 to 17.24 to get the same revenue to work to be a revenue neutral. So, does that answer your question? Is that what you're asking? It should look. Your mill rate calculation. Oh, there it is. Okay. Should look like this. Okay. Right. Okay. So the mill rate calculation that you're seeing includes everything. So it includes the Board of Education as proposed by the Board of Education. It's including their um, capital requests for expenditure. It's also including all of the government expenditures um, as proposed in the mayor's budget. Not because you guys haven't gotten through everything yet, so right. it doesn't reflect yours yet. So that's um, the mill rate. Now the other big, uh, and you'll so well that's the revenue portion of the budget. The next step would be to go through the um, through the departments. If and anybody I know, has a question, know, right? Yeah, if anybody has a question, I mean you guys have already been through right. a good chunk of these, so. Um, if we want to just start by saying the number, and if you guys are good, we'll just um, continue on, and then at the end, when you guys have accumulated any adjustments, I believe then you would make the motion to to send it to them. Okay. The first the first one is fourteen eleven. Yes. It would be the board of finance. Board of finance, and you will notice that on all the ones that you have. If you had previously approved a number or previously recommended a number, the board of the board of selectmen filled is yeah. filled in. Thank you. The ones yes. that have not are remaining blank because you had not made a recommendation on that. And as a note, whoever did it, I love this cover sheet, which okay. also reflects that. Yeah. I, yeah, that was a nice cover sheet. And and makes it easy to follow when we're wondering where's a department yeah. and just look it so up you're there. Gonna, you're gonna uh, go in chronological chronological order. And if we have a question, right. we'll bring it up. Okay. On the, on the first one, as you, you see, it's $1,500 more than last year right. because that's from legal printing. It costs a fortune to put anything in the Norwich Bulletin or Harper. You're on 1411, right? right. 1411. Anybody have any question on that? <coughs> no. Nope. Okay, we're not going to vote to approve it. If you have no. any question, that's fine. All right, slip, switch over to the uh, 1412. That's the mayor's selection budget. As you can see, it went down, and the reason was explained that half of the NISA salary is going here and half is going to the IET. No. I'm not, yeah. We have to do this? I, I, I'm uh, not sure I understand. Well, can we wait till we get to the IT budget? Yeah, not really. Sense. Okay. Denise? I, I mean, it, we can't vote. I, I'm not going to say anything on this until we understand if we're putting it here or there. Okay. You put half? If they're that intertwined. Okay. Let me explain this. Half of Denise's salary is in this budget. Yeah. Okay. $33,000. Okay. Which basically mostly approved uh, on a six to zero vote. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's lower than last year's budget. So if, if you look at 1429, that's the IT budget, okay? Right. So the proposal in the mayor's budget is to take 50% of the executive secretary's salary, 33,000, or actually it's 31,000 and change, and move it over into the info technology budget. She would then spend 50% of her time um, overseeing or um, managing our um, IT policies, um, the um, sorry, my brain just blanked out. Technology. Um, the overall technology. So she would help with training. She would help making sure that we have. Um, proper documentation on our IT um, programs. 
In that budget, in the IT budget, there's also a proposal for a part-time a part-time individual to work 20 hours a week to assist in the website, the calendars, doing correspondence, helping with the boards and commissions, and basically help backfilling for the time that we don't have Denise being the administrative assistant. So these budgets, yes, are in conjunction with each other. Um, okay. So that's that's the shift so that you're seeing an increase in the information technology part of that increase um, is being um, offset by the um, the, tw the 12,000 that's being reduced in the mayor's budget but there is an overall increase to the budget of 36,000 for this proposal okay if I may part of, part of the and we have a huge jump in software because we're paying service contracts on two software companies. We've got ActiFund and Tyler. The, um, the other thing is because no one's kind of watching the IT store, if you will, six years ago we went, on a, went in on a multi-town grant and replaced all of our equipment. Right. It's dead on its last leg. So unfortunately the equipment has bounced up as well, but since seeing that, I've also done a computer replacement plan, which includes service if we choose to stay with an internal server versus a cloud-based that goes out to 2031. So we're not going to have, and I've tried to equalize the bump in equipment, balancing servers with desktop slash laptop in the use of it. Well, I, I was going to ask, should I ask that question now, or you can ask it to but in, in terms of a desktop, why not use laptops with docking stations? Because those are, uh, um, one of our previous finance directors had to have a desktop with a docking station, and it was almost more expensive than a desktop and a laptop. Yeah. I'm talking, you have I one know. computer. I know. And you, have a d and you have a docking station. I know. Actually, Don is, well. <laughs> okay. No, Don's that got that as a leftover and it and, was and you're saying that's a lot more expensive than buying a desktop and a laptop? Almost. The desktops are $599. Yeah. yeah. And not everybody has a laptop either. Right. I mean, we don't right. necessarily, okay. not everybody has a laptop or has a need for an affordable. We haven't unit. used desktops at Honda in like 10 years. Yeah, everybody has a docking time. station and a laptop. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. why he okay. is taking you over. No. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Fighting so, Yes, Douglas. <laughs> quick question. So you have an executive assistant, Denise. Okay. But now we're taking yeah. half of what you do, half of your time, and you're going to put it into IT. Yes. Okay. So we're taking the uh, half of your salary and putting it over into IT. Okay. You're going to have half of executives. Well, the other part of the proposal is to hire a part-time person. To that do would what? Fit, that right. would then be answering the phones and being as, and assisting. Right. But that's sitting in the I, that's sitting in the IT budget. Well, well, right. I was if that person say is doing executive assistant work, why is that person's pay in IT? That's what was yeah. that. That didn't sound right to me like 10 minutes ago when we first went over it. And also, why should it be a union position, which I still don't understand. I know Denise said union one winds up being it, cheaper, but I don't understand how it doesn't union need to be a union position. position. It doesn't need to be okay, a union so position. So that's not necessarily, that yeah. That's so okay. and then, could well, we? Well, a lot of the, the, the bulk of the work on the part-time person would be IT related, as far as keeping up the social media and some of the other stuff that I can give off to him or her. See, I looked at this as more of just of a change in that right now, if we look at your business card or what's on your, your emails, it's the executive assistant and the IT person. So you are you already doing these things right now? Yes. And they're not so they're not getting done in a timely manner. At yeah. the end at the end of the day, the budget's going up by one part-time person. Is that, am I right? Yes. 36 days? That's proposal. a heck of a part-time job. Mm -hmm. We're going to have IT. Well, 
I, Denise's job and what she's doing is really important as an executive se secretary. I would like to see us go out to look for somebody who would be a part-time person who has the technical experience to run this part, I can't see anybody because I have my glasses on. <coughs> but to do that for us, whether IT, it's an IT person who, whether it's, um, for lack of a better term, per diem or um, you know a subcontractor who does it day in and day out, who may have more knowledge because Denise is doing it part time, is not in that profession full time. I think. I, I would like to look at that so that Denise can continue doing what she's doing as an executive secretary and not splitting the job. I graduate in August with my certification as a um, chief government information officer. But technically your job is executive secretary, so. Right, I'm just saying, but right, yeah. there's training for municipal employees on what's for what they post on their personal social media page. Mm -hmm. We have. <coughs> Anyway, that's. Uh, here's my concern. Uh, the, conceptually, I don't have one. You want to, you want your stuff up to date and, and equipment-wise. I see a 9.11 potential increase in the mill rate, and we're taking on more hires, and that makes sense. How? I mean, I know that that, that to me, that position, um, if, if, if that's going to be a regular. Uh, town employee, but we're putting like $36,000 aside for that, right? Yes, that's the important For part-time, that, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure that that's Medicare and Social Security and all that stuff, right? Can't we just get, can't or we? Or is it? Or is it? No one answered you. I'm oh, sorry? Yeah, she said. I said yeah. Did you answer him? Yeah, she yeah. said it's part time. Yeah. Yeah. Turn these off. <laughs> so there's also wow. an increase for the CGCIO. There's also an increase of over twelve thousand for that, because the the mayor's budget offset was by twelve thousand two hundred fifty two dollars mm -hmm. to offset the increase in IT, but the increase in IT for staff is. Fifty-three thousand. So it's more. It's. But we reduced half her salary out of the marriage. No, we didn't. No, I don't know how we did. It was that not half. It's the, her salary went. Wait. Mayor's payroll number is less than current fiscal year to help offset because, the. Oh, okay. Yes. So there is a reduction, but it's not. You're not seeing a full reduction because the full amount of my salary is is budgeted in this budget. Okay. Well. And so and that's why you're not seeing the one for one there okay. on that number. Okay. But yes, okay. the net proposal on this results in an overall increase to the budget of thirty-six thousand. Um, now, yes, but, but there's a town. The town needs to have somebody who has their eyes on where our IT infrastructure is, mm -hmm. how many, com you know, what we have for computers. To help streamline, you know, when people are having computer problems, to streamline those requests, because um, some of those can be handled relatively easily before you call in a contractor Agreed. and say, "Hey, can you fix? You know, you need to send somebody over and fix this." And it's something that Denise could have, you know, taken care of in five seconds. You know, so you do need to have eyes on this as well. And there are a lot of policies, especially as we move more into the digital age on record retentions and email retentions and towns notoriously are behind the curve on a lot of these things. And you know, having that information in house and having somebody to be able to oversee that in house is, is very valuable. Um, but that's the reason to look at both of these budgets in conjunction with each other. Answer your question, David Renee. Okay. Well I I, I got a question. Okay. We tabled most of the most of the uh, budgets that had new hires incorporated into them, and, and I understand that the insurance number and the fringe benefits have probably got those people. In. Well, maybe <laughs> we may want to sit down and prioritize right, prioritize the, the 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 requested new hires. Put put one through whatever because I. <laughs> Huh? There's no 
went through it. Yeah. No, no, Willie got Willie. Willie, 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 Willie won. That's it. Willie and this one, I think, is the just only two. two. It's, it's just two. these two. Yeah. And okay. forecasting, though, down the road, in charter revision, they're creating a new position, and that is a zoning enforcement officer, who's separate from the building official. Right. Mm -hmm. And I can guarantee you, the instant that that takes effect, there are going to be people clamoring for us to hire a zoning enforcement officer. So there's number three. Because when's the vote on charter revision? The election. The election. Maybe. Maybe. Or Maybe. Probably Which would be in this budget, in this proposed budget, by that time. Because I can tell you, a year from now, chances are this board is going to appoint a zoning enforcement officer if, it's, if it gets approved in charter revision. So there's three people right there. Three people in a shaky economy with a state that's unloading as many expenses as it can on its towns and still raising taxes, by the way. And we're going to have to raise taxes. I agree with Roy. I, 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 I don't agree with this whole idea of just continually adding to payroll. You're not but, adding, uh, you're not adding the, three. You're adding two and a little less than a half. But in terms of IT, if you sub it out and you, you call an IT person in from the outside each time you need a problem, at the end of the day, you're going to spend more than having your in-house person do it. Okay, I'll trade you a zoning enforcement officer for IT. I mean, that's that? apples to oranges. Or one of Willie's, or Willie's new person. Well, we, put, we put the zoning because if we didn't put it in now, you, you couldn't put it in at all. Right. Because you had to right. do the whole charter all over again to put it back in. I don't think we're going to have an enforcement officer at all. Nobody even mentioned that when we went through this 25 meetings we've had already. Not one person had mentioned that we're going to hire somebody. Right, but, you're, but that board doesn't oversee well we can handle that here yeah. right so that's right you got to remember right now we have a full-time building official now yeah, that, that also does zoning enforcement and i was talking to him at the last meeting we're going to need a hearing officer uh, you know a hearing board okay unpaid okay yeah. but i think that will start the the process of enforcing violations so I don't think just because it's going to be in the new charter or might be in the new charter that that's automatically going to happen. And that's that's then. This is now. I would hope it wouldn't. I'll I'll, I'll stand side by side with you and vote against it. You have my guarantee. Okay. So if we had to, if, since we're looking at this, actually, I think I'm kind of glad we're doing this. Emergency management. But what are we, 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 what's going hold on. Hold on a second, because. Mary's right 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 right. Hear, hear me out. You got emergency management. Where do we know? He's 542 or, or 1442. So we want it, we want two new hires, okay? Mm -hmm. And we say because it's it, it, it's in the it's in the town charter that it, we don't it doesn't necessarily have to turn it into position. Why do we have an emergency management state? Person? Just tell us we have that. No, the state says so. You have State and federal. You have Firma. You have, that's why you have to have these warming centers and shelters. <coughs> that's why we have that in there. You have to have, the town has to have somebody designated as the emergency management coordinator for the town. Does it have to be a paid position? Generally, it's a staff position, yes. And I think we get money towards that from yeah. the state. Yeah. Yes. There is a grant. There is grant money that we receive for that. It's about five thousand dollars. It's about half mm -hmm. the cost. All right. So if we were to prioritize the IT person or the person that that uh, recreation needs, what's the priority? In a one-two. And if we just want to review the recreation request. Because um, I think it's only fair that we also mm -hmm. that you yeah. also you know discuss the recreation request. Um, that's to help maintain the parks. So um, you have a fair amount of property that is that is parks that's handled currently by two people, one people, one, one person. By Crabtree, mostly by himself. One person, but predominantly. Um, there's been pocket parks that have been added. Um, and so you start running thin with one person to be able to adequately maintain those parks. And that's why the request for the second person. Now with that, 
part of 10,000 of that salary was moved out of the highway department to be able to help offset the cost of that um, hire to recognize that part of that needed to be addressed in parks for an, a second full-time position. So that's, that's the nutshell on the parks request um, there as well. So, um, you know, it's a balance between both. I think, you know, both are very valid um, proposals. Could, you know? we, could we do with, if we couldn't do without one for a year, which would it be, folks? You can't, you can't answer that question. You know, the guy in parks, you know, we line every field for every, every event. For but if we could school. only hire one, I mean, look at the end. I'm looking at the end, too, here. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're asking me to take on two, a, a full, is that full-time or was it, it was a part-time in, in Willie's Park? In parks, it was a full-time position. So you're asking to take on a full-time employee and a part-time employee that's We'll get paid pretty good money when it's all said and done. At least the package is going to be worth it. And 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 we're telling and we're telling the people and yeah, yeah we're, we're raising your your mill rate nine point one one. I think you're doing. jumping to conclusions that you know that's not going to pass in the state. You know that is not going to pass in the state of Connecticut legislature. That's true. I, I got a pretty good idea. It's not going to go down that that badly. But still, even if you cut this in half, Tony, now you're looking at a four and a half percent mill rate increase after we've done it the last two years in a row. First of all, first of all, the park guy from several business people in town, very prominent people who pay a lot of taxes, said to me in confidence that when he drives up Kennedy Drive, he's basically totally sick and aggravated at the shape of Salmonzi Park and the other parks because they're not being taken care of. I confronted Willie and Jerry Bolson. They don't have the manpower to do that. You got Sandy, you got snow plot, you got leaf pickup, you got a whole bunch of other things. You got one guy who's cutting grass in the entire <coughs> time. And he not only cuts the grass, he's gonna <coughs> line the fields for little league, pony league, soccer, high school football, high school this, high school that, and everything else. It's almost an impossible task. That's why he's held off all these years to get someone to relieve the situation. Can any of that be subcontracted out? It, it costs you more in the long run. Just like Scott mentioned about the uh, IT person. I think this this guy here is 16 bucks an hour. Tony, you brought up a, a good point. You said we have snow that's gotta be plowed, we have leaves that gotta be picked up, brush that has to be checked. Mm -hmm. You know what? Maybe it's time we say we can't afford to go around and pick up every resident's leaves every year anymore. Maybe we can't afford as a town to go around and pick up all the sticks that you put at the end of your driveway. Maybe we ask the people to take care of their own leaves. Maybe we ask the people to take care of their own sticks. And that way we don't. And living in a Disney World. In that way we. In that way we don't have to. We don't have to hire. Sitting by the end of the road. Yeah. You, you'll make Putnam look like a ghost town. It look like a, a crap house. I have stuff all over the place. Bringing it back to the IT thing. Is this something that CCM has looked at for a like, shared? You know, when we were talking about having a shared HR person that they didn't do. Would they look at something like a shared um, IT person that we could? Pitch into something like that. I'm thinking it'd be more of a NECOC thing, right? Yeah, sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah you're right. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I don't know if NECOC has the resources for that. I know there are some, um, there's been some grants um, through um, the state with, um, that's been um, administered through CCAT mm -hmm. to provide some, um, a, some support levels, but um, I haven't looked into it. Um, more recently, so I'd have to go back and look and see what. But it would be hiring CCAT to do it. Um, mm -hmm. And again, you're paying a higher rate mm -hmm. than somebody in-house um, mm -hmm. to manage some of that, um, you know, directly, so. Okay, it's not as much as, as looking at a full-time or part-time salary, but IT meetings and conferences, 5660, we're going from 1870 to 7,500 or 6,500. What department are you on? IT. IT. 14. Okay, what, what number? 1429. Sorry. Thank you. That is 
is the, the GEMAS conference for Connecticut chapter GEMAS conferences, which were in last year. Which is what? 14 fiber, and municipal and fiber, then, right? And then municipal mm -hmm. fiber is part of that as well. And Doug had sent me to Montana last August for um, National Telecommunications. It's NTIA. They're an arm of the Department of Commerce for the federal government, and they're working on municipal fiber, digital equity, and trying to come up with economic development through getting people connected to the internet, giving them the tools they need. Okay, but that's still not answering. We're going from 1870 to 6,500. We're mm -hmm. over more than tripling it. But because the N the NTIA conference mm -hmm. that I went to in Montana, in and of itself, was almost two thousand okay. dollars. Well, I'm just looking at your budget document, 5660. You say meetings and conferences increased yeah. by 4,630 dollars, and you have quote unquote meetings on municipal fiber. Mm -hmm. Right, but there, so. uh, which is NTIA. Right, okay, so that 10. explains. But it doesn't. <laughs> okay, 2000 is this NTIA. I mean, if we're, if we're gonna be talking about, it, this is a difference of 5,000, over $5,000. The- uh, Out of the $5 million budget, Renee, that's not that much of a, uh, it's not gonna break the bank. It's, it's our, our, our charge, right. our charge is to look what's reasonable that the department heads gave to us. And I went through this budget a million times, as probably all of you have, and there is nothing glaring. I mean, Roy's got a, he's got a point right. about the extra this and extra that guy right. and this guy. That's fine. But our job is to get it to the Board of Finance. It's their job to see what the taxpayers can afford. It's their job to set the mill rate, not our job. And it's up to them to say, okay, the budget is for this. You got to cut five million dollars. Well, see, but if we're deciding, to, does does Rat get an arm? Does IT get a leg? I'm looking at are there other parts of these budgets that are significantly going up? And I'll admit it's because I don't know what that difference is. 1%. Maybe there are other places we can look, and I don't want to be doing penny ante, you know. 2% here, 3% there, like Peter Benoit, Benoit would. But I'm wondering if there are other places we can look rather than cutting off an arm or a leg. I think the department has put that stuff in because they feel it's vital to the town. And Simple we cut that. it every year. We well, maybe that's our <laughs> stupidity to cut it every year. I guess I'm, what I'm really well, wait a minute. we got to make a recommendation. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I, I know. we got to make a recommendation to the Board of Finance. Right. Okay? If we know budget. What, uh, hold on a second. If we know what a, what a potential bottom line is, even if you were to cut it in half, and we know what the potential effect on a taxpayer is going to be, especially those that live in the special services district, because then you've got to tack on that one, which is pretty large, I think we would be ethically wrong to not go through this and try to make as many cuts as we could if we know the pain is going to be that bad. I could see if this all worked out, Tony, to where we were looking at a a, a 0.25 or 0.25 percent mill rate increase like last year. Right. We're not. Yeah, but Roy, Roy there's, you, there's one big glaring thing that we're going to get to. But in the capital side of the budget, 1.9 million dollars in in Jerry's capital request is put in the budget as paying for it in one year. So th that's why your mill rate. Your when and I looked at the same thing. I'm like, my God, what is this mill rate going to be? You're, you've got $1.9 million worth of capital. You're not just doing a debt service over a five or 10 year period. You've got that 1.9 sitting all right there. So the, the numbers are kind of skewed the way we're looking at them right now. And if I may, if you remove that $1.9 million request yeah. and the 258,000 of the Board of Education's capital request, and then you also take out the teacher's pension. The 790, the yeah. $790,000. And the Board of Education, the, the ECS, the ECS yep. neutralizes. You're really looking at a mill rate increase of 1.54. Right. So you're looking at 18.58 as a mill rate. But again, that's a lot of factors. That's assuming that you know that's a lot of assumptions in there. Um, and 
that's why you were presented with what you have because those are the requests um, and how you guys move forward with them is how you move forward with them but but to, to see it for yourself look at 14 14 what 1480 okay and then on the on the, the downside one error that I think we're going to have to bring up is on 1470 we have on the high school debt service only two hundred thousand dollars correct no it yeah. is correct two hundred thousand is correct yes because we're, we're gonna close on that debt in july so we'll only have one interest payment in that current fiscal year but where's the debt service going to be on the on the, the permanent finance the permanent financing won't close until july you'll have debt one debt no the permanent so you will permanently borrow in July. Your first debt service payment for that oh, is it for the following ah, July, okay. right? Okay. So, right. so you only have one yeah, yeah, interest yeah. payment okay. in January, so that it comes from the Let's go 1480. Okay. But anyway, but that 1480. That's you got 1.9 million sitting there. That's why all the numbers are skewed. Just to let you know. I feel better about that. Okay. And you know, all this house is going to be the same shape as us. Is that? State thing goes the way everybody's gonna be in trouble. Not just quite. So, is there any recommendation on the mayor's budget that we want to? Well, I think I'm just still perplexed because I didn't know a that we were investing in Denise taking away from the position that she was hired for to, at some point. So, I'm, I was just I'm just kind of perplexed by that um, because that's a decision that was kind of I mean that's if she was hired to be an executive secretary. I'm, that's where I'm perplexed. I, I, I'm having a hard time with that too, Alma. Thanks for bringing it up. I mean, I'm assuming the not. executive secretary side is a, is 100 percent, 40 hours a week, or however many hours it, it, it comes out to. It I think there ought to be some kind of separation there. It, it's sounding like, well, I'm, I'm going to be in charge of kind of both things, and I'm going to have somebody kind of doing both things. I mean, I, I don't get that. Well, number one, did everybody agree we, we definitely need IT to be done, right? Yeah, I agree with that. Time. Oh, we agree we need IT in this building. Can we all for the time? Yeah. Okay. So if you just tell Denise, forget IT, you're just executive secretary. Who's doing the IT? Have to hire somebody. Oh, hire another person? You're going to talk to these well, two wait, guys. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Tony. Go ahead. You, you're already, you, we're, we're investing 30. The proposal is to invest thirty-six thousand dollars for somebody, and, and then you're going to have that somebody do some IT and some executive secretary. That, make sense. that don't make any sense either. Because then you're going to fight with the bad. It's going to be like job sharing. It'll be the same right. thing we got now. You know that becomes an issue because well, I need to do this today, so you need to do that here, and then you start fighting over who's well, then got what's who. What's the answer? Well, I I think the answer is you need somebody that the part-time person focuses on the IT. I don't think you can have somebody sharing so jobs. We're gonna, we're gonna post an IT position out there at 16 or $17 an hour. Who the hell are we gonna get for that? You get some jaboni from the street, that's no job. When, at what point was her job changed, I guess is my thing. I didn't know her job was gonna change so until we get this, so Doug that's guided her in that direction, and I could see it now, and I fought with Doug, but then he showed me, somebody's gotta do it, and she's the most qualified to do it. But it takes away from her, her right. doing uh, exactly. stuff in the exactly. tech right. Okay, but somebody's got to do it. So maybe the solution here is really that part time position resides in the mayor's budget as opposed to the IT budget. And then really half of her time is spent dedicated solely, and we have set hours, set specific hours right. that you have a, that part time person coming in to cover the executive secretary position with set duties and set things that are going to be handled by that so she can then dedicate that half that half time into IT and it's really structured in that way it's really structured as instead of it being you know kind of this or that it's really structured as well these are my hours that I'm IT and strictly that's what I'm doing is IT and the other you know and it's shifted over I mean that it could be structured in that way so you're saying <coughs> The mayor would then have two people who are serving in the capacity of an executive secretary. Yes. Well, that's sort of, of which is sort of what Denise was yeah. saying anyway. Because when I looked at this, I was thinking the part-time person is doing primarily the IT stuff. But when Denise was describing it earlier, Denise said, "Oh, well, the, there would be a part-time person who would be answering <coughs> phones, 
in doing this that didn't sound as much like IT as covering for her when she's doing IT. Maybe, did I understand you correctly? Yeah, and the, okay. social, the social media aspect of it. Yeah. What do you mean by that? The town of Putnam has a Facebook page and Twitter. So we're, <laughs> we're gonna pay someone to post on Twitter and Facebook. We can do that directly from the website with the proper training for what you add as a news article on the website will automatically push out without okay. having to make. See what you're saying. So there's not gonna be a lot of time necessarily dedicated to that. I don't think that's necessarily the primary focus no. for that uh, intended person. It may be a subsequent task that the person has but I think the main focus would be as a backfill on the executive secretary level, so executive assistant level, so then um, Denise can focus more on the larger IT picture <coughs> because she is very familiar with Putnam's IT and our structure and you know our equipment and everything like that. Um, and then we could just designate those very specific um, times in which she's available for are we, are we reducing our outsourcing uh, expense on IT? No, uh, Savage Systems doesn't write any of the policies or do any of the training on record retention or how you need to structure your email the right way so that we're not up against space constraints and having to pay for space news with what we have to save and for how long. They don't do... Um, well, no, well, my question is, we're hiring this potentially extra half-time part-time person that's going to do IT and part of your job when you're going to be doing IT. So that's an expense. Are we going to save anything by not having to outsource anything by doing that? That's my question. No, I think her focus is primarily going to be on developing the policies around our IT structure and helping to train employees that are currently, that training's not happening. That, it's so not, something that, that we're currently not isn't happening. Okay. And so this would be adding to that. To that. Um, she wouldn't necessarily <laughs> be, you know, somebody has their computer going to the death stair. Right. She's not going to go in She's and fix that. that. Okay. Right? Gotcha. That's what Savage is going to do and they're going to continue to do. But this is being able to get us um, up to up date to speed and up to speed power. on, you know, in, um, Freedom of Information Act, re you know, request requirements and how we are structuring our IT for that. Understood. So is this person going to basically answer the phones and maybe uh, take minutes from recorded stuff? Yeah, I could potentially help put together boards and commission packages. The so letters. can we do a temp? Um, your temp cost, if, honestly, temp cost would be higher because you're paying of hours well yeah because you're paying because you're paying more so it would be better and more stable if you did hire a part-time individual it would most probably be a non-union position um, because there's the potential that they would be assisting with gathering information for our negotiations and things like that mm -hmm. um, but um, so in the long run you're better off if you just if you're able to hire a part-time person with a set window of hours that you're going to have per day and you structure it so, you know, the morning or the afternoon or the midday, whatever, they're structured for that while she's then relieved from that and she's focusing directly on those IT tasks that need to be done. So the 20,000 and change for part-time payroll is assuming how many hours? It's actually 16, assuming 20 hours. I think it's only 16. Okay. 16. <laughs> I realize I was starting to do the math, and then I figured yes, someone else probably he's, already he's did. Something hours, right? yeah. Okay. And at twenty hours, there's no insurance benefit. Right. Right. Fifteen fifty nine is what I came out with using a hundred a thousand forty hours a year. Take that out. It's a one point some odd middle increase. 
I think that's what we should focus ourselves on and not worry about the threat of the state coming down and bankrupt. But, and this is just, to me, it's stonewalling because I want to get this to the Board of Finance so they have a couple weeks to look at this thing so they can intelligently say it's too high and we're going to cut X amount of dollars and it's out of our hands and let the people finally decide when they go to the town meeting. Tony, from our perspective, this is completely changing how an entire function of town hall is done. Mm -hmm. So from our perspective, we're not here every day. We're not seeing what Denise is doing. All we're, right. you know, we just know stuff gets done. And now we're seeing it broken down this way. And this is the first time we're having a look at it and say, okay, here's what needs to be done. How do we want to do this going forward? And is now the right time, if we add a person, is, the, is this the right time? And is this the right place to add a person right now? All right, so, it's, I, so I'd like to try something. We already approved 1412. I'd like to throw a motion out there to approve 1429 as submitted we're not, in the... We're not what? doing any approval with that. I thought we were just going through yeah, making approve. recommendations. Oh, so I recommend <laughs> that we mirror <laughs> the mayor's budget on 1429. Which is the other the other conjunction with 1412. Total so amount would be 17635. So you're saying... Are you making that motion? I'm making the... We, 1412 stands as it is, and 1429, I move that we uh, put, we recommend, not approve, but we recommend 176.35. So you want to see the full, the full amount? For Just, the like mm -hmm. Just like it is. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. I want second. Discussion. We discuss it for six hours already. Yeah. Well, I, I agree with Alma. I agree with Renee. Um, I can't rubber stamp this like Renee said. We're not in the building every day. Well, that's the problem. So, right. but we also know numbers, and mm -hmm. this is we're just asking to do too much. And you're asking certain people to do too much. And if it was a union job, they tell you go smoke because they, they would leave, and then we'd be in a quandary. I, Tony, I think my biggest problem goes back to the fact that all of a sudden we ne Denise's job is changing, and it has been along the way. Apparently, Doug was doing that, but I, I don't think the board knew that that was the direction it was going. I think if we may have had some insight from Doug, because this didn't happen overnight. How long has it been going on? I have been on call 24 7 for the Nutmeg Network for the state and for IT issues for six years. How long has he been sending you to trainings and things like that? Because those weren't in the budget. No, it was just covered under the mayor's budget, under meetings and conferences. Yeah. So I think that's where my <coughs> dilemma lies is that it was, there was, I don't want to say it was non disclosure, but it wasn't. That we weren't on board, we didn't have right. any idea that the job was changing. Right. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to, to say, oh gee, you know, had we known that this was the preparation for this, I think it would be a little bit easier pill to swallow. Yeah. Rhea? And I think, you know, part of that is the town administrator recognizing a need within the town mm -hmm. and trying to get that filled okay. um, using existing staff. We've reached a point where we can't just keep using existing staff without letting other things drop off and fall off. And that's why I think you're seeing that within this budget right. now. And so there's no, we've reached that critical point of not being able to continue to just have the same person stretch in that many different directions and still be able to work effectively in the different directions. And that's why the proposal to add that half-time person is in there, but also at the same time to recognize that she's not performing just as an executive assistant, but that she's handling a fair amount of the IT matters for the town and properly reflecting that within the budget. So it's kind of a twofold to bring it to light and show and recognize that that IT function has been being performed, but that we've also re reached a point where it can't be performed by that one person. and handle that it that it's more than just that you know one person can handle all of that plus a full-time job at the same time. Yeah, I think 
that Roy and Alma may be with me on this. I don't, I'm not, don't want to speak for you, but in general government committee for the past several years, even before you came on, we're talking about wanting to have updated job descriptions mm -hmm. and knowing what's going on. And every time we did that, Doug was sitting here with us and he heard us say that, <laughs> nodded his head. And it's just really frustrating hearing now. When th the first time when we have the budget in front of us, that he was part of revising someone's job description for years without, telling without anyone knowing sure. it. And it just, we're all being put on the spot here being told, here's what you need, and you need more people, and here's who's doing what. And we need all these meetings and train not trainings, all these meetings and conferences and things, and they've been happening, we just haven't known it. It's hard to see that in numbers in front of us all at once, where there was absolutely no prep, no inkling over however many years. Mm -hmm. well, the reason I made the motion is because we're not here on a daily basis, if the mayor says that the need is there, the town administrator says the need is there, we're talking a part-time person, <coughs> let's try it. Well, we're talking a part-time person and a significant increase in software usage fees because we're getting new software. But that's a significant no increase in meeting, in meeting and conference fees, which may be a drop in the bucket to the entire you know, 5,000 bucks. Do we want the extra 5,000 bucks to go to meeting and meetings and conferences or to the Flower Bridge? Neither. Honestly, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> you know, if I don't make me That makes it easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if I have to pick one over the other, I think it, it you know. Sorry, so you can't speak. <laughs> All right, you got a motion on the floor and in a second. Well, this is discussion. discussion. Scott. <laughs> I would vote in favor of your motion Good. if we found another part-time position that we didn't need anymore and we could cut it. Then you can have your IT person. I don't know where that is. Where you find that? Do you have any part-time people? I'm trying to think who's the part-time well, we person. Moved, we moved, I think, two part-time people in public works and recreation into the full -time, or in, and parks into the one new full-time person for Willie. I will admit I'm probably misstating what came from where. But I know there was a public works part-timer, there was a rec or parks and rec part-timer, and they went into one full-time position. Arguably, that is not a new position that's combining into a more efficient workload, mm -hmm. if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> and apparently You're I do. There. This yeah. is good. This You're is relatively okay. there. So that's not really a new person. Okay, Renee, Renee, Renee. Denise, can you repeat that Scott's motion? Do you have it on there? Oh, I'll, I'll repeat it. I said, that, I, I said that I recommend, and I didn't use the word approve. I heard you that very we, nicely. We, we uh, take the recommendation of the mayor of line item 1429 to be 170,635. And, and only second it, loud and clear. And we had a discussion. And we had 30 hours of discussion. I'll call a question. All those in favor of Scott's motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. One, two. Any abstentions? I'm abstaining. I'm abstaining. I don't two know Two abstentions. Else. One, two, three in favor, two against. Motion carries. Yeah. Keep going, Mary. Okay. You're on fire. Okay. So we did that. <laughs> the treasurer had been previously reviewed. Are there any questions or anything on the treasurer? Okay. The revenue department had again also been previously reviewed. Was revenue the one where there was a question about legal notices? She had requested legal notices to be put back into her budget. Right. Um, however, they we had um, put them all into the overall. Right. So it's still going into the overall instead yes. of to her. Okay. Assessor. Assessor had been again previously reviewed. Board of Tax Review, same, everything's level on that one. Mm -hmm. Town Clerk, had been Here we go. Here we go. If you look at the Town Clerk, 
If you look at my budget, it's down to 109, which is a 3% raise. Okay, so that takes out the 3810 that right. would have been a salary increase? Yep. So the town clerk was requesting an additional increase on her salary based on um, the market. She had done a market research of area um, town clerks, um, and she felt that uh, her salary was not maintaining or staying with market. So that was what her request was, especially given that this is a hospital town. So there's a lot more transactions with a hospital mm -hmm. town. Um, all the births and everything and deaths are recorded here, and then she pushes it out to the other towns. So our real question is if we want to stay at the 112.810, we gave a check mark to before or take it down to 109.101. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to make a recommendation that we um, go with the mayor's budget of 145.624. I'll second that. No. Well, the total. total. She's uh, talking about the total because it would impact not just I'm wages, but also to right. go with the mayor's budget of one hundred forty-five thousand six twenty-four. Yeah. Yep. Second by me. Renee. Renee. Discussion. Yes. Go very quickly. This is one that we voted on. In fact, I voted in favor of, of this particular department budget. Right. Six zero in favor. Right. Um, I now see what you guys. Are talking about when it comes to the numbers and I was in favor of everyone getting the three percent that we had talked about mm -hmm. and I was not in favor of anyone getting over that mm -hmm. right but now we know that it is that, over that was, that was <laughs> in it and we were but told that it was a I understand decision. but I still believe personally that this board has already made its this decision on it. So okay. when we vote, even though I agree with what you're doing, I, I, I still think it's in the purview of the Board of Finance to finalize that change, so I will abstain from voting. Okay. So yeah. you're voting on the procedure, not the number. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So all those in favor of this motion signal to say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Aye. Two abstentions, one, two, three, four, five, zero, one. Five, zero, two. Motion passed. Elections is one we're missing. Elections, right? yes. That one, this one has not, this one was tabled previously. And I think it was because there was no department request, there correct. was no mayor that request on this one. So you now have a full complete. Correct. So it's in there now. I, it's I, in I there put it exactly what they had last year. I recommend okay. that we uh, follow the mayor's guidance. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed or abstentions? Okay. Registrars, again, this was tabled same for thing. the same reasons. I'll make that motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any bit stain? Okay. Probate court. We already did that. Yeah, we already did that. We did this one. Okay. That was done. Legal. Legal. 1421. I'll recommend that we uh, uh, do the 71,500. Second. Second. Made second. Can I ask a quick question? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why is it going up to 10,000? Well, I just told you, we from the uh, Merca and Col Colina, so <coughs> yeah. went up, yeah. and I'm sure the others are going to go up as well. And, and the legal notices are in The legal notices are in there. Yeah, the, I remember that was added too. Yeah. This the legal yeah. notices all got lined up in here. So Scott made a motion to accept the 71.5. Is there a second? I second. Okay. Discussion? We just had it. Any follows in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstentions. Okay, move on. Town um, building had been previously reviewed. Yeah. Uh, same as last same year. Same as last year. Building official had also been previously reviewed. Essentially the same. Land use commission had been previously reviewed. It's substantially the same. <coughs> Essential services. Refresh my memory. This was postage going up, right? Uh, yeah, copy and copy machine supplies. Okay. Um, right. We have a new map. The map machine, the map machine right. downstairs. We now pay the lease on that, as well as uh, some supplies for it. So that's the predominant increase within that budget. Um, fringe benefits. This one um, did not have. We didn't have rates yet in for the health insurance. So the health insurance is the 3.2 percent increase. That's what's reflected here within this budget. Um, yeah. Um, well, it's better than we initially thought it was going right. to be. We thought it was going to be 9.8. Right. 
So a 3.2 really is not that bad, and it's based on experience. But you also have the 790 in there. Right. So yeah. the teacher's yeah. This yeah. one has the 790 because that in the governor's proposed budget, that is a government side expense, not a board of education expense. So that's why it's being reflected here because it is part of agree with you putting a cost yeah, of that was benefit. Good I do. Yeah. That's good. Cool. As much as I don't like it, it's all I agree with you. Putting <laughs> it. I don't like it either. Because so, that's where we would normally house our pension costs, so that's where it got. That's I'll make a motion we accept the, the mayor's, yeah. the mayor's uh, budget date, recommendation. Second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstaining? Okay. Uh, 1429. Um, insurance. This is our workers' compensation and our auto and general liability. Which one are you on, Mary? I'm on 1427. I think that one was out of order. It's in, yeah. Oh, okay. I just straightened yeah, it. Yeah, right. Oh, you did. You're right. The tab right. one's out of order. Oh, look at that. Shame. I'm moving it right now. It. Yeah. Go, Mary. I'll have to fix that. 1427. Um, so this one is, um, we're a little bit um, higher on workers' compensation. Um, we are going to be having a small increase on that. Um, it's, But um, it's also related to just overall exposure change, too. So um, How's that? So if we have um, different class people classified differently, um, then the rates can get changed accordingly. Um, so that's really what is this. If you're looking at, um, and Karma came back and said that we were going to be having an increase on our okay. on our premiums. So we're budgeting for that and a little bit more for potential exposure changes. Okay. So it's a $1,000 increase? Yeah, it's a $11,000 increase on the workers' comp. The general, the auto liability, we don't have an increase coming going in on that, so we're keeping that flat. But that eleven thousand dollars doesn't that also include new hires? Well, the, for the percentage that would be appropriate, right. just like the health insurance so that's includes them as well. as well. Yes, just as the health insurance would be including it if there were health. I think there's only one that has a health insurance. Yes. We have a motion and recommendation. Oh, so moved. Should we second that? Second. Okay, motion be second by Roy. Any more discussion on that? See none all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstain? Nay. Aye. One nay. Six one approved. Okay. So fourteen twenty nine, we, we voted did. Approved. Well, done. Fourteen thirty, which is municipal agent to the elderly who has been previously reviewed. Mm -hmm. And he did come back and tell us where cut basically did everyone in half. Okay. 1431 Commission on Aging had been previously reviewed. That's a new request. Um, canine control, this is NECOG, previously reviewed. The fire marshal um, budget had been tabled, had not been reviewed. Right. So this department has a proposal. There's uh, one of the part time fire marshals would increase the hours to 80 hours per month. Um, and that's based on current demand. There's a lot of demand for um, inspection and um, review. So that's what um, the, the increase, the $7,000 increase is, is in the wages. So we're not paying him anymore. We're just making him more. Just giving him more hours. Yep. He's not well, he's we're not paying him for more hours. We're, we're paying, paying him yes. for more hours. He's yeah. working more he's hours. He's putting in the hours already. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'll, make, I'll make the motion that we have. Uh, second. Any more discussion? That was your second? Yes. Seeing there's none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? <laughs> Anybody abstain? Okay, fire. Um, the next one is emergency management. We partially reviewed that one. There is a grant in the revenues to offset half of the wages on this. You know, motion, uh, I'll make that motion. Recommend. Second. Motion made and second to recommend. All those in favor? Uh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Discussion. Discussion. His salary, 3% of the last approved budget salary is uh, only $294, yet he's there's a there's an increase of over a thousand in the in the mayor's budget for Ooh, his part-time salary. Good catch. Good catch. That's one three percent. Three percent is only two ninety-four. No, very good catch for it. Yeah, it's, it was good. So, so it's actually ten percent. So, yeah. Well, is that, uh, Mary, was that mandated by, by the feds? Or the I don't believe so. I okay. I'm not okay. sure. Okay. I didn't yeah. actually. 
So I make back and nay. Ask that <laughs> yeah, so nay. Any? Vote my motion down. <laughs> well, no. I, I, Does Norm have any info on? I know you're not emergency management, but have you heard anything about where that might come in? No. no. Okay. That being the case, I make a motion that we. Well, we have a motion. motion. We got to vote my motion down. Yeah, vote the motion down. Sorry. All fair, Scott's motion. Or, or we vote to amend. All right, we'll vote it down. So, okay. Okay. I got all those in favor of Scott's motion mm -hmm. signify by saying aye. See, and then all those against? <laughs> there you go. Okay, okay you so beat, I know. the number, the $10,000, they wrote a grant already for the emergency mm -hmm. management grant. That's the salary that was used in the grant preparation. So if the salary amount decreases, the wage amount decreases, the revenue on the grant side decreases as well. But it's a wash anyway because we're only going to give them 50%. 50%. Okay. Okay. Just, I just wanted to clarify, that's where the number so came from. Is it going to cause a problem with our grant application if the number is different? If the budget yeah. number? No, okay. You just get 50%. Okay, but as long as it won't it affect our credibility no. or whatever, okay. So you have a question. Are we giving 3% to anyone who gets a check from the town? Well, it's a union settlement 3% and that okay. followed by all the other employees. Okay, Departments. so full-time, part-time, they work 10 percent. hours, 5 hours, doesn't yeah. matter? It doesn't pay. Right. Yeah. Yep. Select them, everybody. Yeah, yeah. You got it. Budget. You're, you're, you're in Hawaii with you're 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 your big race. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, um, we voted down that. Yeah, yeah, Scott, voted I made a motion here. that we set this uh, uh, 1442 uh, budget to ten thousand one hundred and nineteen dollars and seventy five cents. If we could round that to ten thousand one hundred and twenty, yeah, sure. We don't do pennies. Okay. <laughs> so it's ten one twenty. Yeah. Okay. And then hang on a second. We have to have one more revision. Total. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Social, the, Security, the Social right? Security would revise down to seven hundred and seventy-five dollars. So the total would be you and Mary I don't do math in public. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, that rule. Let Mary do it. Would be, like it's a pretty late for you, friend. Eleven thousand four hundred and forty-five dollars. Eleven thousand four forty-five. Four forty-five. Yep. 11500 Okay. 11, I will amend my motion to set this department's budget at 11500 No, no, no. 445. 445. 445. And I will second that. Motion made by Roy Sengel. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstain? <coughs> Roll. Facility study for had already previously been reviewed. Public Works. Yeah, we were waiting for numbers. We got all the numbers. The okay. So all, all the numbers are in. Are in there and they're correct. I was just going to ask. You sure? That. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I got it. So the regular yeah. wages you're seeing is a higher than 3%, mm -hmm. and that's because we had some that's employees that. transfer from the WPCA that are at higher rates. Mm -hmm. By union contract, um, they have to remain at their rates that they were at in the WPCA until the time in which their um, wage in the public works matches the WPCA, so we don't get to change or lower their rates. So that's why the, he has to reflect that I, increase. I, I get that. Are they tiered? Do, do they have tiered step increases? I think they have three. They do, yes. Because the numbers, I mean, if you if you did five percent for the whole for the whole last year's pay, uh, budget for payroll, that's less. It's thirty-seven thousand bucks, give or take. And at three percent, it's twenty-two. But these numbers are ninety-one and fifty-nine. So is that expressing a lot of step increases? Um, there, I think there is a couple. There is some step increases in there. I mean, you know, it, you, <laughs> there's, there's, that, I know there's a lot of people and all, but the WPCA paid rate that was higher than the road. The road crew. The road right, crew. Yeah, they're coming in more than maximum top rate. Right. And then All right. Um, the increase over current year budget on the regular payroll is thirty nine thousand, and yes, so it's we have that the road crew people that have come in at the WPC <coughs> that are okay. they are right. substantially higher. I mean, it's okay way right. more than five percent higher. Okay. Um, a question on line items 
57, 22, 23, and 26. Gasoline, followed by diesel fuel, followed by oil and lubrication. Mm -hmm. It appears as though that those three line items have been combined into one? Yes. Okay. I don't know why he would do that, but aside from that, throwing that off to the side, we have a budget of 57000 under the current fiscal year that we're in right now. This is line item 5722. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's asking for another 57 next year, but so far in this fiscal year, which we're three quarters over, he's only used like 15%. I don't know that the, that, that reflects all of the bills in the $4,800. So I, I am gonna go back and research that and find out um, if all of the bills have actually been posted in on that. I have a hard time believing that we've only spent 4800 yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I know gas prices um, have increased from last fiscal year at the same time. Mm -hmm. They yeah. have. I just locked in rates. <laughs> and we were a buck more on, gas on diesel and gasoline both than a year prior. Right. Both a rates. A dollar more? On both rates. Gas was a dollar twenty one last year. No, no. on a lock in on a on a lock in price. Were, Are you talking fuel oil or gasoline? Diesel and gasoline, oh, both oh. increased over the wow. same the same time period last year. Oh. That sounds about right. Oh, no. <coughs> no, no, part no, of my no, business no. Is, yeah. is diesel fuel, and I I haven't seen that. But well. You locked in for what, yourself or the town or what? what you say, <coughs> the town. The town? It was a town competitive bid. What are we paying? Not for Putnam. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm on day six. I All haven't right. done anything <laughs> for Putnam. Right. I just had some nickel and dime questions for Jerry. Propane, propane gas, 4232, and we got 11. Right, right. That's another one. And, and then the other one I had was a real nickel and dime question. But cable weather, it must be he's getting cable because he wants to watch the weather. Yeah. How many people still watch the weather channel when you have a smartphone in your hand mm -hmm. and you get the radar and instant updates? Which, which, what, Wherever you what, are. What line, yeah. what line oh, item is that? Line item on the weather is 5737. Right at the bottom, all the way down. Okay, we're paying for cable and it says for the weather. But I mean, I haven't watched the weather channel in but 20 years. You have cable up there already. No, but that's $1,800 for the weather channel. Oh, wow. I thought we could just Wait, those are we sure when, that's really what it is? When everybody in that <laughs> building has a cell phone that has and all the information in real time. And we're paying Jerry, we're giving him a smartphone. I, I would rely on my smartphone to look at radar more than I turn on the weather channel. Yeah. How about, and I don't know, the emergency management? Yeah, I'm not it's sure that's what it is. But your, your question on propane, though, isn't nickel and dime. No, it really isn't. Do we have an answer on that? Mary, uh, anyone? In, in, and I think I didn't necessarily go back and, and make any recommendation on change on that because if I look at the 14, 15 audited numbers, you're at, yeah. at $11,000. Um, um, so we would have to have you know finance dig into the current year number and yeah. find out why all of a sudden there's a set do we completely come off of propane on something i'm not sure i don't have the answer for that okay. i mean can it be we pay for the winter for all of the propane and fuel and all of that at yeah, some we point we after get bills, march we get bills every month sometimes yeah. some of these numbers we get a big hit after the budget season right. so you don't actually see the whole right. expense at this time Right, and this has been a mild winter in every way in terms of temperature, in terms of snow and the need for plowing. Yeah, that's why I was looking at salt. You, you yes, know, you yeah, know. it's the same. Salt is pretty yeah. low, right. Yeah. Yeah. But again, we haven't had a whole ton of global warming. Um, yeah. and, snow events or salt events that need right. to be done, so you're going to see right. that down. Right. And we don't know what next year will be, so it's... Yeah. I, I right. mean, I tend yeah, to yeah. feel on that yeah. stuff... Yeah. If, if he doesn't spend it, it gets rolled back into the... Yeah, I know, Roy, last year, I know at one point... You, you triggered, yeah. Yeah, something like yeah. that. You've got it at the end of the year, cheaper or something like that. So yeah, that's yeah. It's good. I spend too much time on IT, my brain is full. Yeah. I recommend that we uh, 
I'm going to go with the mayor's number of 11, uh, 1, 186,492. Second. Motion made second to go with the 1.186492. Any more discussion? Yeah, Scott, I'm surprised you didn't want to take out the 1800 for cable. Uh, <laughs> it's not worth the fight. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, Jerry will sleep tonight. Go sanitation. Sanitation is um, just the contractual increase. Yeah. Um, it's all a waste collection. I move we, we go with the recommended number of 430,000. Second. Motion made second to go with that number. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Are there any extensions? Okay. Okay. Um, economic development. <laughs> um, so the department had requested um, uh, an increase above the 3%. It got removed out of the mayor's column. Um, substantially. Most everything else is pretty close in line, so that or the mayor's column reflects the three percent. The one forty two oh one seven. Yes. So I, I would recommend that we. Uh, I'll make a motion that we recommend the mayor's budget second. second. Motion made second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Redevelopment. We've already looked at. Yep. Yeah. Social services. We've also looked at. Outside agencies, this one we hadn't looked at. There was quite a few that were still um, not in yet. Are they all in? They are all in, so everything is in. I just I just got one question, and I'm, I'm glad it's, it's less, but the Quinnabon Valley Senior Citizens and the Putnam Senior Citizens, are, I mean, we just created a $17,000 commission on aging, and we got senior citizens, another one in here. Where the, the, the commission on aging. <coughs> and Putnam seniors are two different, and east is east and west is west. So the twins not going to meet, and the right. commission age is trying to get them to come to the meeting. Uh, okay. Be part of it. Okay. Very if good. you notice on uh, fifty six thirty four, took it out. I took out the engineer because mm -hmm. yeah. I checked with Jerry and I went back several years, and we never used them. But we threw fifteen thousand in Jerry's budget in case we need right. some. Right. Yeah. That'd be per. I saw that. That's why it's okay. Good, All right. You saved I didn't. I wanted to make sure there was no causality there. Okay. Fifty-six seventy-five. Yeah. What's the story there? Transit district elderly <laughs> disabled program. I'm guessing that's an eco cost, but that is that's the um, ADA paratransit. I don't remember. Oh yeah. Did we, were we supposed to have included that? I think we were supposed to have included, included that. Included that. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion that we recommend the mayor's numbers here for the board appointments. But, but you just brought up the the forty five ninety three that's not in there. Yeah, I was just curious. No, no, but okay. I think it's a. a Do you remove to add it? <laughs> no, he just moved it. He he just moved well, it right, but you can five, move to amend, and uh, okay, I'll make the motion to move to amend and add in the forty five ninety three on line number fifty six seventy five. Why? Because we're being charged that for having people in Putnam who are elderly or who have disabilities to be able to use the paratransit we services, are. which are the door to door drop off services. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was in there. No. Well, oh, oh, it was, oh, yeah, I no, missed it on the mayor. So oh, you're saying it should be in there. It should right. be in there. Yeah. So right. the new number is 231810. Okay. So I'm moving to add that. Okay. 231810. That's your motion, Renee? Yep. Nice motion. Thank you. So today you recommended 231810. Okay, that's the amended motion, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she just said it, right? Yeah. So we have to vote on the amended motion. Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? <laughs> you say Mary? Okay. And now we have to vote on the original motion. Aye. No, no, no. Let me move. The motion was to recommend oh. the 20, 2, 20, 227 217. And it was second. All those in favor? No. 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 We no. amended it. We, we amended the motion. Tom. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're good here. We're good. 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 We're good.
I'm not in favor of that. I already voted against it. If you brought it up again, even though I'm not in favor of it, I would just abstain. Okay. Because it's in the Board of Finances hands now, okay. in my opinion. Okay. For him, we took 10000 out of Jerry's. Right, right, twenty thousand. Right. I think it still oh, makes so. sense in terms of numbers. We haven't had an extra helper in the rent right. department for twenty years. Right. So what are we doing? Mm -hmm. Does that has that been approved? Now? That's already been. Okay. We don't need to review that one. Recreation has already been on. Recreation has already been re reviewed okay. as well. Are we good on recreation? Historian. Municipal mm -hmm. story has been reviewed. Yeah, yeah. Debt retirement. Debt retirement. So mm -hmm. our debt retirement yeah. is, um, we have new debt coming on. We have the lift station for the, um, for the tech park um, that we closed on in December. So we'll have a first loan payment on that in the upcoming budget, as well as um, the debt service that you're seeing for the principal and that interest. That's related to the um, repayment of the Ash Landfill account for That's the capital projects that are borrowed against it with the 1% interest rate. Huh? Mm -hmm. 5660, correct. Yeah. Yes, 5660 and 61. That reflects. 61 as well. Okay. Yeah, that's the interest portion. Right. So that's reflecting the 1% interest. The debt service interest, the last line high school, that's right. reflecting a single interest payment that's going to be upcoming in January of 2018 when we close on our, because we're gonna, we should be closing and permanently financing that in July, which will put the full, um, the next July. Then on the next July, the principal payment will be on the next July. Do we have any idea what that yes. will cost in, in, in additional? Okay, money? well, the, the, the net cost of the taxpayers is gonna be right now between 11,800,000 on the low side and twelve million five hundred thousand on the high side, which is much less than the, the question that we approved the school when we said it was going to be sixteen to change. So that's I mean, the good news. Now to answer your question, yeah. if we take a pessimistic approach and take the twelve point five million, okay, we don't have our bond rating yet, but one of the options was a USDA loan. If we take a three point three seven five USDA loan for 40 years, that debt service would be 574. If we amortize that over 20 years, even though it's a 40 year loan, uh, it would be 869 mm -hmm. per year. That's just one option. Mm -hmm. We can get into the bonding options once our audit's complete and once we figure out what our bond rate is. So it's going to be at least a mill. Yeah. Over a mill. Over a mill. More than a mill. The, the 574 was how many years? 574 40. is 12.5 million over 40 years at 3.375. 40, yep. Yep. And the 869 is if we amortize it over 20 years. Okay. Is there a 30? Well, there's only a, there's only a 40, but you can amortize it however you want and pay it back. Oh, early. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, did, okay. but they don't do it. You could do a 30 if you wanted to. Yeah. The rate might be less for the 30 than it would be. 30. The rate will be the same. same. Regardless, oh, okay. the rate is locked at the same number. And we do it under no matter whatever. And this 3.375 is as of today. We don't know in the future what the rate would be. The rate's going yeah. to so, mm -hmm. As I had said when this was approved, Thomas, I said this school is going to cost you at least one mil more a year. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, oh, no, yeah, we, yeah, no, yeah, we told yeah. we told you up front it was going to be two mils. Yeah. When I did the presentation, I had two point one. John Q. Public didn't see that. He saw yeah. bells and whistles, a new high school, Yahoo, Yahoo, for less than three hundred. I think the moral of the story is it came in a lot less than what we thought. Uh, okay, small gym. It's a small gym, yeah. and I voted yeah. against that gym. Good. What are we doing with the debt service, Maria? Do we have to vote on this? Need a recommendation. Need a recommendation. I recommend that we follow the mayor's proposal of 613-969. Who second? Second. 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 Right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Let's nice have it. Capital non-recurring. Capital non-recurring. So these are all the capital requests for the current fiscal year. Um, and it totals the 1.9 yeah. million. So there's a lot of different ones. There's a, a dump truck. Um, this would be replacing the 1998 dump truck that we currently have, if you'll recall, the 1994 dump truck that we had Ooh, went into a yeah, ball of flames <laughs> in our last, um, last snowstorm. So, you know, 1998 is a long time for a truck. 
um, used in the in the ways that they're used. So um, it's definitely, it's definitely do. Um, there's a request for forty thousand for um, demolition of lighted properties. Yeah. That's got to stay. Yeah. Yep. 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 Um, there's a request for fifty thousand for town building improvements. Is um, that all town buildings? It's all or? town buildings. I think it's just to handle the various um, projects within okay. the town buildings. Um, town hall roof replacement at four hundred thousand. This roof it's here is well past its useful life. Um, we have a lot of water infiltration that's happening. Um, you'll notice some over here. There's some in the other rooms. Um, so we've kind of reached that that point where that and roof needs to be addressed. To, to piggyback what Mary just said, in order to do this roof, we have to get special staging. There's only two places in the state that have it. One's out of New Haven, one's out of Hartford. And we have to get approval by the State Historical Commission to put the special tiles on the roof, which yeah. has cost us a fortune. Yeah. Yeah. But they have. if we think down the road and we have to sell this, if we're successful with a new town hall, hopefully it's we'll get plus. some of that money back. But right. something has to be done with this roof. Yeah. They, 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 we've patched it beyond right. patching. So and then the last wind, there was a whole bunch of shenanigans. It's going to be any cheaper roof. next year. Oh, right? oh so, so we really need to <laughs> start addressing the roof. Yeah. Well, um, got Doug's Pocket Parks and Flower Bridge on Wait, a, let's, can we just go <laughs> yep. payload replacement? The payload replacement. Um, so that's replacing a payloader that I believe is oh about 20 years old at this point. So it's due for replacement. How many hours? Um, a lot of hours. Yeah, they have quite a bit on it. The sidewalk replacement. This is to um, fund that uh, sidewalk replacements up. Um, Wal Walnut, 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 South Main, and um, Woodstock Ave. And um, I'm, I'm meeting with Jerry and uh, Jim Locker from NECOG tomorrow or yep. next week to go over getting some cash from NECOG on sidewalks. Grants. Grants. We're okay. looking at grants for it as well. Um, road reconstruction, the 300000 We've already been setting aside money for road reconstruction. Um, this would kind of top it off for us to be able to actually complete those and repave those roads and get those roads completed and done. Um, the brush chipper, a uh, fifty-five thousand for for the brush brush chipper. Then we run into the pocket park. What is that? Pocket park. Another pocket park? No, no, no. Or there has to be. You have to take care of them. And basically, the public business association is spending their money to take why care. Is it, why is it on the capital and not operate yeah. I mean, who's operating much with that though? Well, why, why is this under a capital expense? Well, would would, this would be if we were building one. Right, yeah. Wouldn't Not it be if we were parks? maintaining one? Well, I don't think we're going to build yeah. another pocket park. No, but wouldn't Earlier, it be? Earlier, we, we argued for a half an hour about hiring another person for Willie to help take care of pocket parks. If this $5,000 is for pocket park maintenance, didn't we already address that? You could just cut it on the budget then. Okay. Well, but the question is, before I cut Save something out, I mean, but it, is that for why like is it here? Or? Is that what it's for, really? If it's a, if it's for maintenance, it shouldn't be on the capital. Exactly. Right? I think it's been left from last year. That okay. is supposed to be maintenance. Is supposed to be in the parks and rec or whatever other budget. Yeah. So we can cut out the pocket parks five thousand. Out of capital. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Uh, we already voted on their maintenance budget. So. Right. Yeah. Lower Bridge, really? That's a beautiful thing to have. Oh, Let me tell is. you, you voted four to three against it last year. I put it back in. It would be the bridge that goes across. It's, it would be beautiful. And if you, it would be beautiful. It would enhance our beautiful town. But if you want to be cheap and put it on, put it on, on the bridge that goes right over here. Bridge Street. Bridge Street Bridge. Yeah. It'll be a permanent structure. It'll be self-watered by itself, so you don't need a man to take care of it. It doesn't have to be maintained. And the highway department said they would take, put them up and take them down in the storm. But the initial cost is five grand. You got Jerry's word on that? Guys? Yes, I right? do. I have to write. <laughs> it's not going to cost us anything to put it up and take it down. No, because it's part of their it's part of their problem. Yes, ma'am. It's actually a fifteen thousand dollar project. Um, the Planning Business Association through the Beautification Committee is they took it out of their budget this year, but they said if the town would put in the five thousand, they will put it back in their budget, and we are supposed to raise the money for that. 
we pretty much raised it all last year, but we needed the commitment from the town. They needed the commitment from the town. That's why I put it back in, because yeah. they would, the Putnam Business Association would put money in, plus it would be a fundraiser. I've already pledged, I want one of those things. The boxes. I want a box. Yeah. Not to bury me in. How much is a box? 500 know. bucks. Right. Let's go, Mr. 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 Honda. I'll do a box. I'll do a box. I'll do a box. <laughs> I was going to do a box. We, we don't know if it's going to happen yet. We don't have 3,000 right here. No. We've sold a lot of boxes already. <laughs> See? There you go. Yeah. All right. So what's, what's the next? Okay. Fiber optic. Okay. The next one is the fiber project to the tech. So the tech park has a <coughs> conduit in the ground that you can pull fiber in, that we can pull fiber. But the fiber is not in the ground. It's a tech park. If you're going to be marketing a tech park, it needs to have network, it needs to have fiber run in it for, net, for um, network connection if you're going to really be able to market it as a tech park. So that's... Yeah. Um, really just being able to run that five well starts the process of being able to run the fiber because it's not the full cost it's about 500,000 to run the fiber actually well, it's on the five-year capital yeah. improvement plan I think yeah, three million right. yeah okay. yeah I want to say it's so it's 700 women 750,000 yeah because this um, is 25 percent of it because we're getting a 75 percent mm -hmm. there you go yeah any chance of other grant money to go towards that that you I don't know. We, what did you say? We can look. Other grant, any park. chance of other grant money? I didn't hear what Scott initially said uh, before. Oh, I, I said the tech park, because we got our partners, we get a 75% reimbursement on the construction of that. So our net cost is 25%. Remember our big push with Tony, Owen, Doug Cutler? We went around and we got Brooklyn, mm -hmm. Pomfret, Scotland on board. That was to go from a reimbursement rate of fifty percent to seventy five percent. Didn't, Doug, oh, didn't, I see. didn't yeah. Doug get some grant money for this? Yes. The, this is our net cost. This net cost is the twenty five percent. Our cost. Yeah. Seven hundred and fifty thousand. Well, seventy twenty five percent of seven hundred and fifty is not two hundred and fifty. Well then I'm just I'm just saying that when Well then it's not jiving. Right. You're right. It's not. So what is our cost? If 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 the, if the whole thing is costing seven hundred and well, if if we were getting twenty five, if we were getting seventy five percent, it would be a million dollars, and our net would be two hundred and fifty. But you're saying our net, our gross cost is not a million; it's seven hundred fifty. I think part of the concern is that we haven't necessarily identified where this additional grant is. Do we know that we have this additional grant? We. Not an additional we should, not, we should, you know, we should there should be money as we're running the fiber to get light up the farmers market with a USDA grant. And there's other grants to expand it out a little bit for the but the tech part, there's nothing left. Oh, there's nothing left. That's oh. what I thought. Yeah. Okay. So, so where is this on the five year capital uh, information tech no, where is it? Parks. No, information technology. Third day. Number three. All right. Fiber so this project. is overall. It's it, it's a, it's a seven hundred. Our cut yep. is is a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar now. Yes. Okay. Denise is saying we have no grant money left. Right. Well, we have nothing in the that's in the a problem. Grant. That that's a problem. That could be a problem. Because you're talking of over a mill here. And, 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 and so you're and this year, <laughs> we were supposed. To, and I remember this. That yep. By getting other towns on board with this, our reimbursement rate would go from 50, 50 to 75. To 75 percent. Okay. So I haven't had a chance to review that at this point. So the, the, the 50 to the 75 percent reimbursement rate. Mm -hmm. Now, did it include fiber? Did it just include acquisition and development? Okay. It sounds like it just included acquisition and development. Well, well we need, part of the guy, the guy that spearheaded all this yeah. is no longer with us. So, but we can't ask him. But my I'm job is to get the, the other towns the team, on board. I'm looking at the team right now that went around and sold it to everybody. Right. Yeah. So, so what's the answer? Fiber, nothing to do with that. Okay. We just want to get partners to, to buy in. They it wasn't a lot. Okay. Well, I don't want to be told that. This fiber yep. installation. Oh, it's, it's part of all that, that that we talked about when it really is. Doesn't sound like it is. No, it? no. So they this is over and above. They managed to get the conduit in the ground because it was a four. They knew that 
fiber needed to get into the park, but there wasn't the resources to get it in at the time. So they got the conduit in the ground, so at least you don't have to now dig, dig up, up the all the sides of the, you know, dig up the so sides of the streets. doesn't mean you have to do the 250 this year. When, the, 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 when the YMC was being okay. built, the water lines were being put in there. Mm -hmm. I think this was right along with the water right. lines. Huh? Cutler said, are you putting the water lines in? Put this conduit in for oh, yeah. fiber. So right. so, yeah. No, that and makes I sense. I remember that coming to us yeah. about yeah. that, yeah. the conduit yeah. part, but that's all I remember. That's that's all. Yeah, and that's all that went in was just the conduit so you could pull. Again, I just don't want to be told that, oh, this is what we talked about earlier when this yeah, is, know this is new. Yeah. Yeah. So are we, the, the 750 total, that would just be our percentage of this? So the fiber total Sounds would like be a million five? Like no, that's the full, okay, full that's the full cost. That's the full cost. Fully loaded cost. So we'll get some reimbursement back from our partners? No, no, no. 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 Okay. No. This is why, a, why don't this we just take the 250, to move it till next year, you're only six months away, whatever. But if we move it till next well, year, that be means ready. you got trees, you got gravel. Well, it mean, but it means we can't start marketing. Why not? You can on start having marketing. Why not? using yeah. fiber as a marketing coming strategy soon. for the next yeah. until fiber a year out. Coming soon. Marketing one on one. I think that with the <laughs> amount of development that still needs to occur within the tech park, yeah, yeah. Um, you You're probably still have some time. However. At least knowing the conduit is in the ground, we have the ability to know that the, the pulling of fiber right. will be able to happen in a shorter time span, yeah. rather than having to re-excavate and put all of those into the ground. Um, would it be nice to start moving on the project sooner than later? Yes, but you know, I think that there there may be some. Well, but there's also the fact that next year we're saying move it to next year, but next year we're going to have yeah. another mill plus on the school. Yep, yeah, you're right. Well, we'll also have some granularity on what Connecticut's going to do too, though. Say the we'll say the nine hundred and se or the seven hundred and ninety thousand okay. dollar pain pill just turns out to be you know <coughs> zero. Say, you know, then we I think it's probably a good idea for this particular fiscal year budget to remove that. I'll well, that's not a motion. Yeah. I want to. Yeah. I want to. I want to. Well, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm 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 a motion. motion. Yeah. Well, I, I did. I, I was. I was just talking. Why don't, we, no. why don't we just instead of taking it completely out since we can't decide, why don't we cut it in half? Well, you're not just having no idea. You're not going to get half the cable. Well, no, no it's not that. This isn't going to start it's it's anything anyway. anyway. This yeah. is a matter of state. You would stage in and it take part of the chunk this year. Because right, you wouldn't right. start this until you have seven hundred fifty thousand dollars ready right. to go. Right, but what this is doing, if we at least put one twenty five, at least put one, yeah. it at least is showing our commitment as a town to make sure that there's going to be fiber in that conduit for the time people are putting shovels to the ground. I'm just afraid if we keep pushing it, yeah, we're going to have the bigger nut. Exactly. In three years, it's going to we're going to have you know seven hundred fifty that we're still looking at in three years. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Make it one and a quarter. So what you're saying? I make a motion to this. You just can't. Mm -hmm. So I'll make well, that motion to well, my twenty-five. Well, there's. I, I I thought we'd maybe discuss some of the things we we want to remove, and mm -hmm. so we could get to a dollar okay. figure and oh, okay. vote I the think, dollar figure. I so think I'm also seeing Delfo wanting to chime in on this, but I could be misreading that without Wait, my you glasses. Question, Mr. Mayor. Yes, ma'am. The only thing that I would question is. We're all assuming that all of the funds from the manufacturing grant, which is the 75% reimbursement, have all been expended. Mm -hmm. But do we know that for sure? Oh, Doug had told me I had 900000 Out of this manufacturing grant. To yeah. spend or not? Because you told me I had 900000 to get the fiber project done. Okay, because you didn't indicate where it was coming. Okay. Because you had just mentioned down. steep grants and things. Before we move with the capital too much, I think we should find out from Mr. Nelson if that grant has actually been expended. I filed the report for um, the budget page that we had found so far, and that is in, um, but I don't know for sure, and I don't know if anybody really knows for sure if all of that funding has been expended, so we need to maybe check with DECD. I think we, yes, we do need to do some more research on the overall funding of that to make sure on where everything is actually shaking out. So there may be more funds in there to do something like that, and then you could take it out of the capital improvement. 
Another thing I got is, Tony, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't tell Joe Public we're, we're cranking up your mill rate and we're going to spend five grand on a flower box. That's I, okay. I, I can't think of that. I lived with it for a whole year. I can live with it for another year. Anyway. What are unplanned expenses? The wording of that yeah. should I be mean, that can just un un unforeseen. Unforeseen, but I think that probably should come out of a capital project. Yeah. Yeah. Budget, that wouldn't be capital. That would be a situational <coughs> thing. Right. Awesome. Okay. That's, that's where the calls are getting at. We have any calls on the bill? So I'm coming up with a reduction of 140. Is that correct? Well, okay. we talked about the getting rid of the pocket park because that right. was a maintenance item yeah. mm -hmm. for 5000 Yeah. The other five thousand. No, no well, we haven't voted on. Well, that's not been voted on, but yeah, it's been passed. It's so right now I'm at fifteen thousand. Delphi says we got to verify the that there might be some money in for the for the fiber. So I don't want to put one twenty five in if if we're gonna find there's money in there. So do we table this one? No, until I just take the one twenty five. Just just go. So you put nothing in there? I put nothing in there until we find out. And it, we're six months into the, the, the next year. Well, if Doug said we had 900000 we might have a payday coming. I have no idea where it was coming from. But so you, you're going to recommend to cut the whole 250 Yeah. All right. So no, you're, you're recommending... You, so if you're cutting the, the 250 yeah. plus the flower bridge... Plus the flower bridge. No, no, no. No. no, 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 no. We're going yeah. to yeah. change. We should make changes. With the exception... Of the five for the pocket parks, which has been removed by the department, and the ten for our <coughs> plan, which you sort of removed as the, at the executive level. I think all the rest of these, if we're going to take them out, should be voted on. Oh, I think the only other two that are that are of, of controversy is the flower bridge and the fiber. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So for a starting point, I recommend we take out the five thousand for the pocket park and the ten thousand for the unplanned expenses. Can we get to a base level there? Second. <laughs> no way. Oh, oh. Do we need a motion to do that? Or we just no, all I think agree we're gonna, we all agree that we're going to. Okay, that. so we're all. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now so the pocket the, parks are out, right? And the ten thousand for the unplanned, unplanned okay. expenses. Okay. How about so. So fiber. now the fiber. Do we put one twenty five? Do we put two fifty? We put nothing. I recommend we put nothing. I want one twenty five. I'd second one twenty five. That's two. I agree with nothing. Okay, I think it's two to two. Two to two. Are you are you gonna make a motion? All right, I, well, I, we do. I think we they right. can come up with a general yeah. consensus. All right, I don't you know. say take take it all take, out. Take it all out. So you get two take Roy, out. you say take it all out. I do. I'm with Elmer when I damn. All right, oh, I knew I could have done it. Oh, yes! I'm using Roy Simmons in the last week. Don't make that sense. Take it out. All right, now the flower. Right, so we took out we took out the pocket parks and the fiber optic. And the 10,000. And the 10,000 unforeseen. And the 10,000. Okay. Now we're at the flower bridge. Leave my bridge alone. I just wanted the 250. I yeah, recommend I that we keep the flower bridge because I'm going to support the mayor because he helped me with my 250. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks See a lot. See how that goes. <laughs> now, the reason I put that in is yes, because it works. We work in conjunction with the, the Public Business Association, and it, it's good camaraderie, I think, with the town and the partnership with the business association because they do a lot of good things for our town. And it's not that much. They're putting in 10, we're putting in 5. So we don't have to spend for any labor or any of that stuff. It's done. So my motion's on the floor to keep the pot of the flower bridge at 5,000. No, I think we can do a general consensus. General consensus. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Renee? I'm with, I'm with the bridge. She's a flower no, bridge. I'm Even though you took my 125 out, I'm with the bridge. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm with the bridge. One, two, three, four. I can five. Agree. Five. <laughs> <laughs> You guys want to know? Five two bridges in. Boom. Oh. The flower bridge is in. We're sticking I think, around. I think <laughs> maybe we'll still sell them a box. So <laughs> <five two. laughs> this five this is, in my opinion, this is still a situation where down the road it's going to be an expense. And the board of finance can say, get it out. Yep. Right away, it's up to them. This so will bring the bottom line number down on the on the on your budget for one million seven hundred thousand dollars. Wow. 
That was good cutting. Now the big question is, what we haven't talked about is... Is the 250? No, sorry. we already <laughs> talked about the 250. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, this <laughs> right now is reflected as a one-time expense. Yeah. What is? The oh. 1700000 right. So right. that just, this alone is almost three mils, okay? So what we usually do is either borrow against the ash landfill money or, or amortize it over five years or 10 years, but I'm not willing to support a one-time hit of 1.7 million for that. It's all stuff we need, but I don't want to pay for it all in one year. We don't need the bridge. Well, that's not going to make a difference at 5,000. Well, but you've got to start somewhere. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, here, here, here's the thing. Let, let, let me, here's what I'm thinking, and tell me if I'm, if I'm off point. We all know the mill rate's potentially going to go up, mm -hmm. okay? Because we know it's going to, you know, the budget's going to be this many dollars against the last, the last year's budget. But the Board of Finance could certainly get creative with, with yeah. borrowing money or something like that. The thing I don't understand is about this whole borrowing from Ash Landfill account, I think that's a good thing to do. I don't understand because we got the money there and we're putting it back, you know, future generations of Putnam, all of that. But here's the drill. <laughs> I don't know why we're penalizing ourselves 1% to do that. And I don't even know, I don't even understand if we had a bad year. Like, say we wanted to borrow, just, just say, 1.5 million from Ash Landfill to pay for capital improvements this year. And that's because that's a nice round number. So we borrow 1.5 million. And you, and you take it out, let's say five years, whatever, 10 years, because that's an even number. But one year, you get Connecticut again. Why do we have to make a payment that year? No, we have used it for rate stabilization. If you look at some of the previous years, I we under, used, we've I, used money to offset the mill rate out of that. I, I understand that, but if it, when you say loan, every time I hear you say right. borrow money from Ash Landfill, it costs us it cost us one percent well, to pay it back. We're paying ourselves back. It's an opportunity cost. We'd be we'd be getting one percent on that money. All we're doing is paying ourselves back the opportunity cost. That's all. But you're still paying more money than look. That money is saved. Well, it's, one it's like if I had $50,000 in my savings account and I wanted to put $10,000 down on a car, penalizing myself for using my own money? What, what the, theor the, the theory is, is that 50000 is in a riskless investment earning 1%. Okay? So what you're paying yourself back is what you would have got. 1% is peanuts. It's just a, it just keeps everything equal. But. And also, the ash landfill is a separate fund. It's not the general fund. I understand that. And so therefore, the general fund can't have direct access to that as just spendable general fund because it's a separate fund. So I understand that, but you can so certainly borrow against it. You can borrow against it, but you have to charge something of an interest rate. So that way you, because it's, you don't even have to necessarily get to marketable interest rate, which is a lot higher. Sure. You need to at least charge an interest rate, and that's state regulation and GASB requirements, that there is a, in, there is a um, calculation of interest applied to that as because of the opportunity cost. It, it would cost you more to go out in the market and borrow that. What, what I'm saying is, is that is that is money in a fund, 9.1 million bucks in a yes. fund, right? And we Designated for, spe for specific use. What? What's that use? It's designated oh. for ash landfill enclosure. That's what its designated purpose is. We cannot just undesignate that completely and just say it's general fund. It's not. I'm not. I'm not saying that. But we that we can't use it as general fund money. Well, wait a minute. Scott just said we did. No, I was thinking it. And we, we have use, a surplus. We use surplus. Yes, we use right. surplus. We didn't touch the ash landfill. We have. We, we have. Surplus. We have a pol We have a loan policy that we have established to be able to utilize the ash landfill funds reserves for capital projects to be able to uh, repay that in a shorter period of time than bonding, but also at a significantly reduced interest rate but I'm, to be able to still get those projects done. I'm guessing that, that charging ourselves some amount of interest is basically from the state's point of view to make it an arm's length transaction. Yeah. Yes. So the money in the Ashland account isn't ours? 
It's the Ashland Bell Fund. Okay, and who it's owns the fund? fund? It's a separate fund. It's still the town of Killingland. It's town, still the town of Putnam. I don't know what town I'm in. I was there at 6 o'clock, let me tell you. I still say Albany, not yeah. Hanford. It's, it's yeah. still the town of Putnam, but it's a separate fund, and that's one of the distinctions in a municipality is the funds are restricted to their purpose use, and you can't just throw them all in one pot. They have to be kept that. in their restricted uses. So understand. it's still the town of Putnam, but you have to still be able to um, regulate the repayment of that and have a structured repayment process but of that. One thing that I am having a hard time with, and that is we're being told that, well, it's a smart thing to do. It's the cost of opportunity, whatever it was that you mentioned. Opportunity cost. cost. Opportunity cost. And now we're, we heard it may be a state law that you have to do this. You have to charge yourself well, interest. Well, you have to charge interest. And they and they based it, the 1% is based on opportunity cost. Well, That's where the percentage got derived I have from. Heard, I have heard that from you, and I mm -hmm. heard that from the previous town administrator. But no one's ever taken the time to say, well, Doug, right there. That's the state law. If you can quote the state law so easily, why can't you show it to me? That way I know. I didn't know because, I needed to look it up before I came in. Yeah, uh, Otherwise, I, I probably I would, would have. Like, I would like to see it because okay. that's what I was told earlier, and I'm being told okay. it again. I don't like it. I don't buy it. For the same reason that Roy brought it up here tonight, and I think you all remember mm -hmm. the last few years I've been saying this, because we're using Ash Landfill money to pay for capital expenses, right? And one of the capital expenses we have in this proposed budget is a new pay order at 165, mm -hmm. okay? So we have this Ash Landfill account right here, and we're gonna say we need a new pay order, so we're gonna go get 165 out, we're gonna pay for the pay order. But we're so smart, again, absent the state law that says that we have to charge ourselves interest, we're so smart that not only are we going to pay the 165 for the payloader, we're going to charge our taxpayers 1% on that 165 to put that money back in, 165 plus 1%. In my opinion, that's not smart at all. Is You're it? just costing the taxpayer more money than you need to. I think to. you're going to pay the 1% than not having a payloader. In our current yeah. investments, what are we earning in our riskless investments right now? Nothing. Approximately. Less than 1%. Yeah. Or right around yeah. 1%. Yeah, point yeah. eight. Point eight. We haven't, we haven't talked once about well, how much surplus do we have? Forget the, I agree with you, Park, about that, about the Ash Land. But we haven't talked about what can we use that we have surplus to offset. I, I haven't gotten that far yet. Oh. Yeah, we haven't gotten that far yet. <laughs> oh. Well, before you guys go raiding the surplus, we might have to go out and get a bond rating. And the more surplus, the better when you try to get a bond. Rate. Who said we were raiding the surplus? Well, we, haven't even, we, haven't even, we haven't even mentioned it. Oh, okay. he, he mentioned it. All right. Okay. I want to use it. Oh, use it. You can't do bond. <laughs> so that's oh. my point. When you say you have a need, we need a new payloader. You have the money. Why are you buying the payloader and then paying yourself back with 1% extra? All you're doing is, is increasing the cost of the payloader by one percent. But yeah, not, what's no, the difference when you were when you were um, saving money to buy the land for the um, fire? Mm -hmm. You kind of did the same thing in some ways because you tap you you put money aside. We put money aside. So you were creating your savings investment product and getting so much interest for that investment product. That's right. It's very similar to what this is going on um, because otherwise you would have had to take a loan out. Exactly. Okay. But when we bought the land, we didn't then turn around and say, but we're going to put all that money back that we paid on the land with 1% interest. But, but <laughs> We just took but, the money out and, and bought but the you, land. But you, you took the money, you, I don't want to say that. It's the opportunity cost. If that money had been sitting in the bank earning 1%, you would have generated that minute, even though it's a minute amount of interest, you would have generated interest. So theoretically, you're paying yourself back what you would have had. 
Right. And you would have the principal to, plus interest. To make that whole. But you did the same thing in an opposite way because you created a fund. A, a fund by taking additional revenue from Jacking the taxpayers. up our tax rates. By the tax. But to get more to, money. So it affected the taxpayer by giving the money early. So. That's it, true. But let's look at it this way. If we didn't do that, okay, the land cost us, call it $400,000. Mm -hmm. If we didn't go up a little bit on the mill rate, mm -hmm. and we did nothing, by the time we're ready to pay for the land, we agree on a price with the landowner, $400,000, then we go to a bank, right. and, and we pull money out. A heck of a lot more than 1%. And then we pay the four hundred thousand dollars to the landowner, mm -hmm. and then we pay the bank back four hundred thousand dollars plus interest over mm -hmm. how many years? Right. Instead, we put a little bit away each year for years and earn and, interest. And earn interest. That's right. Which is so, what we that fund should be doing, but we're taking the money out, so we need to replace the interest earned. But what's but the, the difference is when we were, when we really met what happened. when yeah. we met that time period where we said now is the time to buy the land. We went and got the money, and we paid for it. Mm -hmm. But you created but you the took same money thing out of my it. pocket years in advance, and you put it in a riskless investment, and you earned one or two percent. Whereas if I had kept that money, I could earn a lot more than one or two percent on that money that I gave you ahead of time. And when your bill came due, I would have been more than willing to pay you. But that's a whole other story. And that's just you. Well, that's right. an, that's the investment forward. mentality. Yeah. Moving forward, I think you're going to get move on. you're no. going to get the information on that okay. to him anyway. Well, yeah, we, we, need we need yeah. something on this capital. So we're at one point seven million. Right. I recommend we go with one point seven million. <laughs> you're a second to that. Second. Any more discussion? Okay. All those in favor of uh, recommending one point seven million? Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. You go on that? I'm with you, but I hate to spend 400000 fixing a roof that we may not have in two years from now. Nay, nay. I'm trying to sell okay. the place for six it, months. It's, it's past us. We won't get it. Carry on. Let's go on. We, it's, we're past our... We're just about done. We, we're past our... We're going to set a record here, Mary. There. Okay. I know. We see we do that. The library <laughs> has already presented to the Board of yeah. Finance. Board of Education has presented to the Board of Finance as well. As long as as well as their capital board of ed's capital items, and that's it. You can't touch those. You can't touch those. Okay, so let me see. Now, where are we right now? Is it is it my misconception that we can present this package to the board of finance? You can. We will make the revisions that you've um, recommended tonight, and then. Do you want to have us present it one more time to you in totality with all of your current changes that you've made for you then to make a formal recommendation to go to the... If we could do it today, we should do it tonight. The, Denise, are you with... Um, yeah. uh, where are we? Where are we? Seven... One million seven and then a half. Right. Or I'm at seven million five thirty six six ninety. That's all. Because the mayor's proposed budget was eight point nine nine one four four five, and I'm only at seven five three six nine sixty. I thought I caught them all. Or if it's, if it pleases this board. I've had the lease reserved the 13th. I know there's a uh, special service meeting to finalize this budget after the adjustments are made. So then we, what we would do is reprint this entire package with all of your problems completed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you can then look at the to in totality where you're at and then make your formal, formal vote to recommend to the Board of Finance. So that way we have an opportunity to make sure we've captured everything. And there's just one budget that's going to the board right. finance. 
That'll be printed. The 13th, there's a school building committee meeting, but we don't have to have it at 7 o'clock. We could have the meeting at 4, four o'clock. What, what day is that? Monday. 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 A week from today. Yeah, can we do it? No. We could do it in the afternoon. It's up to you guys. You want to, we don't have to go 7 o'clock. Because I'd rather see some of you guys go to liaisons, go yeah. to that special service district. 5 o'clock would be good. Yeah, we'll be done. Uh, we'll be done in an hour. Five o'clock works. Five hour? good. Oh, We're just going over figures that the finalized here. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Should um, we, yeah. Are we gonna? Well, we'll get to that. Right. So let, we we need a. We don't. Need I a make vote. a motion. We have a what is a special board of selectmen yeah. meeting on Monday the thirteenth at five o'clock. To go over the Third. finalized numbers. Second, Second. by Alma. And me too, my own. <laughs> Okay, five o'clock's good. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Denise, did I give you enough time to post it and all of this stuff? Okay, so five o'clock it is to, to finalize it. We're gonna finish with the agenda here. Now, no, do we I have to do the five-year capital plan separately? Do we have to vote on that tonight? Um, my charter that's supposed to go to planning. Okay. Oh, it hasn't come through there yet. Review and then come back to the board of selectmen. But historically, the selectmen have taken a look at it before it goes to planning. So Mary's going to go to plan with that. And their meeting is sure. on the 27th, so tonight is Board of Finance. Is what goes to them, is that going to show minus the 250 on the fiber for this mm -hmm. year? We'll reflect whatever okay. was reflected within that capital improvements. Okay. Uh, I have no announcements. Anybody have any other announcements? Uh, pardon me? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, public comment. Oh, what about this? Are you going to this part? Mm -hmm. We did all that. Yeah, we did all that. Yeah. Yeah. You can show up on time. Booster. Never show up on time. We're making money, yeah. Booster. We got Anybody in the US would like to say, have a statement or ask a question? Okay. Uh, we have executive session if you want to go into it at 10 oh, 15 God. or you can postpone that. I would make a motion to postpone the executive session to the meeting of the 13th. Second. Motion made second to go to executive session the 13th with the items available. It's the town administrator's contract, and I don't think uh, the facilities might be a possibility because they have some. Uh, I have to go to Bill Sanage with uh, Willie and Jerry to go over the gravel the contract, whatever, whatever. We should probably need part of the call just in case. Put it in, yeah. Okay. okay. So motion made to go into executive session the 13th. No, All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved, so moved. All those in favor? Aye. Holy smokes. This will be a next month's newspaper. I can see that. John, you were sleeping over there. Yeah, I wasn't quite so interested. I just have to. No, no, no.